Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Hearts of Iron 4 using the United UMC mod, which I've yet to play as, I think, which has been out on 4 y 4 for a while, but it's been a very long time since I've actually looked at this. Um, but yeah, I'll let you know, this campaign, I'm going to screw it up. I'm not going to do everything historically, even though it is unhistorical, because I'm not sure how well I'm going to do here, but welcome to UMC, of course. If you want to know about this, please go ahead. I'm going to disable custom generals, because we don't need that. And we'll talk about the Reich and the certain group. Uh, and since it's my first time playing this, I'm going to read through everything. So if you don't want to hear me read it through everything, please skip ahead to about a minute or two. Our nation's nation rises from the ashes, defeated and humiliated after the Veltkrieg, and bound by unbearably cruel demands and force on the Treaty of Versailles. Our nation needs a strong party, a strong leader to lead itself from the despair. And uh, that which came true. In 1918, the National Socialistische Deutsche Arbeiterpartei was formed by Anton Drexler, following the views of militant nationalists of the day, such as opposing the Treaty of Versailles, having anti-Semitic and anti-Monarchist and anti-Marxist views, as well as beliefs in the superiority of uh, the Germans as part of the uh, Aryan <clears throat> Herrenvolk. During the same year, a certain Adolf dude, veteran of the Velkrieg, joined the party. His first speech was held in the Hofbraukeller on 16th of October 1919. He was the second speaker of the evening and spoke to 111 people. His talent as an orator and his ability to draw new members, combined with his characteristic ruthlessness, quickly made him the dominant figure. Soon, he was listening to not listened to by not hundreds, but by thousands of people. He was capable of moving masses and raising immense supports, which would soon bring the party total to control over Germany. The, the group here, the party, completely took power in the country in 1933 when a certain H-Dude, now the party's leader, was appointed by the Chancellor of Germany in the certain group, won the parliamentary election on the 5th of March in 1933 with 44% of the votes on the 23rd of March. The parliament passed the Enabling Act of 1933, which gave the cabinet the right to enact laws without the consent of parliament. In effect, this gave the Big Daddy dictatorial powers during the Ruhm Purge, the so-called Nacht der Langen Messe, of the 30th of June to the July 2nd of 1934. A certain Adolf disempowered the SA's leadership most of whom belonged to the Strasser's faction within the certain party, and ordered them killed. The purge was executed by the double S, assisted by the Gestapo and Reichswehr units. Aside from the Strasser's, they also got rid of certain anti-party conservative figures like former Chancellor Kurt von Schleicher. With this, the NSDAP secured total control over the Reich's politics. Aus der Ausschau erheben wir uns, and uh, Mr. Adolf's reign spring. However, he's still part of the party, and the party possesses other important, influential, and power-hungry men. First among them is a guy named Albert, the party's chief architect. A member of the Adolf's inner circle, he shares with the Big Daddy's enthusiasm with the megalomania project that expresses the future mind of the Reich. Even though he's not yet actively participating in politics, he should he should still be watched, especially because of his support from the working class Germans. Next one is Hermann Wilhelm Goring, a veteran of the Weltkrieg and a famous ace pilot. He received the Zaringa line with swords, a Friedrich order, the House of Hohenzollern with swords third class, and finally in May of 1918, the coveted Paul Le Marais. Goring joined the uh, <clears throat> Nazi party in 1922 after hearing a speech by Mr. Adolf, and immediately rose through the ranks as the commander of the Stimmabteilung, a representative from Bavaria, a minister, without portfolio, and finally air traffic minister in May 1933. During the time, the Reich began to accumulate aircraft in violation of the treaty in 1935. The existence of the Luftwaffe was formally acknowledged, with Goring as Reich's aviation minister. Goring is for sure one of the most powerful men in the NSDAP. Some quiet voices even say he might even be more popular than the Führer himself. And the third man is Heinrich Leutpold Himmler, Reich's daddy of the Schutzstaffel and the leading member of the NSDAP. He studied agronomy at the university level and joined the party in 1923 in the SS in 1925 and 1929. He was appointed by the Reichsführer SS uh, by Adolf Hitler during that time. Germanic mythology, reinforced by occult ideas, became a religion for him and made him become a f firm believer in the superiority of the Nordic race. His consolidated, he consolidated his position of power during the Night of the Long Knives, organized by him and his loyal follower, <clears throat> Reinhard Daddy Heydrich. However, these men are not alone in the power struggle. There are countless more waiting for a chance to increase their power. Rudolf Hess, Josef Goebbels, Martin Bormann, Joachim von Ribbentrop, and all will not hesitate to interfere and shift the balance of power within the Reich. We must be vigilant so our Reich does not make itself its worst enemy. So as you can tell, we can improve and decrease relationships. We enable the Reich's events, which cause additional events to trigger. And we have internal struggles in the NSDAP, uh, you know, the state itself. So getting uh, successfully rid of the shadow of the Treaty of Versailles humiliation, remilitarizing, improving our industry, navy, army, and air force, uniting the Germans Vulcan, and achieving the Gross Deutsche Reich ideal shall satisfy everyone for a time. But we shall begin with everyone's favorite, Rhein Rhineland Besetzung. The Rhineland has been demilitarized since the end of the Great War, but this interest also sounds longer. Germany is a sovereign nation, is free to move our troops where in, where, anywhere within our own borders. So, also we can also impose Mussolini's ambitions, which I kind of want to try out sometime. It sounds like, it sounds like fun. I do want to get down here. No, actually, I want to get down to uh, there. Von der Waffen projects because that we want extra research slot. 
So, um, I've been just looking at this off screen. We have internal relations, political intrigues intertwine the very foundation stone of the Reich. Even though ruled directly by his daddy, Hitler, an ambitious man willing to obtain even more power, not full, have not full, do not have full control of the Reich, so. UGF, Himmler, Goring, Speer, of course, political shifting. Situation in the Partei Politik changes every day. New opportunities come and go, and new personalities come in the limelight. One thing is for sure, nothing is stable in a society where the man lusts power above all. And boy, do we lust. Alright, cool. Hmm, because Himmler's attitude. Cool. And the Schutzstaffel, or the Protection Squad, is a major paramilitary organization led by the SS Führer Heinrich Himmler. It began with a small guard unit known as the Zellerschutz, made up of party volunteers to provide security for the party meetings. And then, under Himmler's direction, it started growing to be one of the most powerful organizations of the Reich. There are two main, two main parts the Allgemein SS, the General SS, or the Waffen SS, or the Armed SS. The Allgemein SS is responsible for enforcing the racial policy in the Reich and the general policing, whereas the Waffen SS consists of combat units within the Reich's military. And situation in Sudetenland, we'll get there eventually. We can do this as well. We get two. Oh, one political power every day, which is not bad. Eh, we could try it. A couple different things here. Support the Ethiopian War. As soon as his nation was attacked by Italian troops, Haile Selassie has tried to gather support of the League of Nations to stop the invaders, but in vain. Now we must seize this opportunity and step where they failed and support his struggle against Mussolini's vast ambitions. I'd love to do that, but probably not. The call von Vach calls him from China. Oh, wow. Do I just record calls von Falkenhausen? Falkenhausen, yeah. And MEFO bills, pretty normal. Um, can we send some guys here? We would love to. I'm not gonna actually send divisions. I'm just gonna send planes. Uh, 183, not bad. Mm, what do we have here? We have fighters, which we probably. I can't imagine Ethiopians having too many fighters. So, uh, go there. Oh, you're still deploying. I deleted all the all the fighters. That's right. There you go. Do that and just bomb the crap of them. Shoot stuff them. Literally, Protection Squad is a major paramilitary organization under Adolf Hitler and the NSDAP party. Schutzstaffel began with a small guard unit known as the Schutz, uh, Hall Security made up of NSDAP volunteers to provide security for party meetings in Munich. Led by Reichsführer SS Heinrich uh, Himmler, who joined the unit in 1925, it grew from a small paramilitary formation during the Weimar Republic to one of the most powerful organizations in the Reich. The two main constituent groups are the Allgemeine SS, which I already read, and uh, the Waffen SS. Uh, I read through all the, or the additional subdivisions of the SS include the Gestapo and the Sicherheitsdienst organizations. They're tasked with the detection of actual or potential enemies of the state, the neutralization of any opposition, policing the German people for the commitment to NSDAP ideology, and providing domestic and foreign intelligence. As the SS grew in size and importance, so too did Hitler's personal protection forces. The three main groups, uh, SS groups, were assigned to protect the Fuhrer in 1933. A larger personal bodyguard unit was called the Berlin to replace the Army Chancellor of Guard, Sepp Dietrich, commander of the new unit. Previously known as SS Stabswache Berlin, the name was changed to SS Sonderkommando Berlin. In 1933, November, the name was changed to Liebstandard Adolf Hitler. The SS eventually became an elite corps of the NSDAP, answerable only to Himmler and Hitler. Himmler's title of Reichsführer SS now became its actual rank, and the highest rank in the NSS, equivalent to the rank of the Field Marshal in the Army, much to the OKWD's disapproval. For das Reich, Volk und Führer. Ah, so good. Now we're going to need a lot of this. Research claims in Middle Africa. So, we could pursue Stahl Pact, which, we, which we'll do. Uh, this is not historical, as far as I can tell. But maybe it is. I don't know. We can support the war. If we do this, uh, anti-Italian diplomacy, eh, could be worse. Uh, it hurts our ambition. It speaks against our nation. Well, we kind of, we really like them, but still. Increase our influence here, too. Um, guarantee Paul's regime. I'm not, that's not very historical, is it? I don't think it is. Demand Sylvania. That's more historical. Of course, to do this one, of course, Anschluss. So, oh, I kind of like increasing your influence here too, but there's nothing there. First Ljubljana Award, demand Slovenia, which means we just require Anschluss, so that's okay. Step up our demands, that's kind of cool. Take out the fascist pretenders. Actually, can we go back and do this one later on? We kick him out of the faction. Has not completed the, oh, okay, so we have to can't do this one too. Yeah, Africa called I just want to look through these, because I'm not really looking at this too much. Offers military alliance formalization. Egyptian for Italy, former the Reichsburg direct. Oh. Atlanthropa Project Preparations. Oh, I love that. Oh, my goodness. I love Atlanthropa. Do not ever get rid of it, for the love of God. But I want to for your plan next, though. Um, this will be good to do just because I want to move economic stagnation. Uh, we just read this one, didn't we? Why did it fire again? Whatever. We need an ambitious plan to provide for the rearmament and ultimate self sufficiency of the nation. This should be achieved within the next four years. Very true. And also, we have like two tank divisions here. Hitler's Jungers tribute to the Reich. And it's literally just a heavy tank, and these guys are just literally a medium tank, so there's no point in having this division. I'd rather just have another tank division. A light tank division. 
Hitler Youth, or Hitler's Youth, the youth organization of the NSDAP, its origins date back to 1922, where it originally received the same Hitler Junge, Bund Deutsche Arbeiter Junge, Hitler Youth League of the German Worker Youth. From 1936, to, uh, it is the sole official boys' youth organization in Germany, and it is also a partially a paramilitary organization. It is composed of Hitler Youth proper for male youths aged 14 to 18, and the German youngsters and the Hitler Youth for younger boys aged 10 to 14. The members of the Hitler Youth are viewed as ensuring the future of Nazi Germany, and they are properly indoctrinated in Nazi ideology. Hitler Jungen appropriates many of the activities of the Boy Scout movement, including camping, hiking, but over time it changes content and intention. For example, many activities now closely resemble military training, with weapons training, assault course circuits, and some basic tactics. The aim is to instill the motivation that enables its members to fight faithfully for the Reichist soldiers. There is greater emphasis on physical fitness, hardness, and military training than on academic study. In 1923, the youth organization of the Nazi Party had a little over 1,200 members, when the NSDAP took, came to power in 1933, though. And the membership of the Hitler Youth Organizations increased dramatically to 2.3 million members by the end of that year. By December of 36, Hitler Youth membership had reached over 5 million. That same month, membership had became mandatory for Aryans under the Gesetz Uba de Hitler Junge. They are the future of our Reich. They will inherit the Earth in a new world, uh, where the survival of the Aryan race shall not be threatened no longer. Blut und Ära. And the challenge is so incompetent that they've already lost part of Africa. Are you kidding me? Nope. Also, we're gonna we're gonna focus heavy on planes in this campaign. Usually, whenever we play Germany, you gotta focus heavily on planes. So I want a lot of cast. Obviously, two out of five is not a lot, but yeah, whatever. Um, actually, let's come up here. I don't know what some of these are. German general staff. Interesting. Lack of general staff. We can go to that one, but that'd be bad. Um, modern mobilization or military situation, I guess. Partial mobilization already, which is okay. Yeah, they're actually going all right. You know what? We'll go. One at a time. One, two of each. Well, I guess one of each, I guess, technically. But I want to get more political power. We already have Werner von Blumberg. Von Blumberg. As well as Werner von Fusch. Good and bad. Another political base, Rudolf Hess. Stellvertreter des Führers. A lot more political power. We'll lose weekly war support. Oh, boy. Partei Kanzler. Political advisor cost plus 80%. Holy shnikes. Alsen Minister. Daily political power. It's not bad. Von Riventhrop. We will need him eventually. Decrease the relations with Goring, Himmler, and the UGF. Shock, of course, is very good. We will need to get him. Speer. Not bad. Plus 10% more factory output. Holy crap. Desmetalis. Not bad. Propaganda Minister. Ooh. Weekly war support goes up. Ooh. Daily fashion support goes up too. Reich's daddy too. We'll get him too. The Abwehr, not bad. The other sport for underline, though, eh. Bernard Rust, that's terrible. Terrible. Hans Oster, not bad as well. Schmidt. Ah, uh, Reinhard. Daily compliance actually goes down. I kind of want to get Goebbels immediately. It's not much more political power, but, like, I want actually weekly war sport and stuff like that, so. Bad, not bad. Military staff, military, tons of military staff, which is awesome. You guys also make us lose some uh, political power as well. This political power won't matter too much, but for now it does. Oh, Inspector. The militarization of the Rhineland. I love me some Goebbels. Where's Goebbels? I love Goebbels so much. Look, the war sports, not much, but you know what? You're going to put him, please go right ahead. Increase uh, the propaganda national spirit level by three. Removing it will revert this effect. Decrease the relations with the EGF eventually. That's fine with me. So, growing propaganda. Ooh, I love that. Access to German scientists, of course. Economic stagnation, which is very bad. Um, Kinder Kusha Kirsha. Very true. Very good. I love that spirit too. Well, I like its effects. Allied appeasement for now too. And then bitter loser. But for your plan. During the carefully prepared operations, 19 German infantry battalions and a handful of planes entered the Rhineland. They reached the river Rhine by 11 a.m., and then three battalions crossed the river to the west bank of the Rhine. At the same time, Baron von Neurath summoned the Italian ambassador Baron Bernardo Atolico. Atolico. The British ambassador of Sir Eric Phipps and our ambassador uh, Andre Francois Ponset to the Wilhelmstrasse to hand them notes accusing us of violating Locarno by ratifying the so Franco Soviet Pact, announcing that as such, Germany had decided to renounce Locarno and remilitarize the Rhineland. As no actions other than minor ob objections were made against the remilitarization, our troops had faced no danger. When tr German troops marched into Cologne, a vast cheering crowd formed spontaneously to greet the soldiers, throwing flowers under the Wehrmacht while Catholic priests offered the to bless the soldiers. Later that day, Adolf Hitler announced before the Reichstag that the Rhineland had been remilitarized, and to blunt the danger of war, Hitler offered to return to the League of Nations. He signed 
air pact to outlaw bombing as a way of war and non-negotiation pact with the France or the with the French. If the other powers agreed to accept the remilitarization and his address to the Reichstag, Hitler began with a lengthy denunciation of the Treaty of Versailles as unfair to Germany, he claimed that he was a man of peace who wanted war with no one, and argued that he was only seeking equality for Germany by peacefully overturning the unfair Treaty of Versailles. Our territory is now back under our control. Auster Schutt zur Grosse. So good. And I'm going to race down this way. I, I want that extra resource slot. We, we're going to need it. Extra fuel, extra civvies, all this stuff. Super important. Obviously, going for all this other stuff here, too, is going to be super important as well, but uh, it's all right. Continue military cooperation with China for now. The common goal unites us, of course. Uh, let, look to the Balkans beyond. Actually, you get more, more support. anti counter pact would be good as well. 100 political powers, nothing to laugh at. Extend the propaganda usage. Ooh, I like that as well. Open up the state affairs. Increase your operative slots. And expand the Levens realm. Which will be good, but we will get there eventually. We'll get there eventually. No need to do that immediately. So, after that, I'll talk to you. For Germany to be truly great, they must be self-sufficient. We must make, make better use of our resources and become more efficient in our construction. I'll talk to you. We lose, actually, quite a bit of political power. We lose some, some super goods as well. We'll be able to build things a little faster, but in the end, it'll be worth it. 18, 18, 18, 36. Ooh, Heinrich really likes us. And we really like him. Uh, stuff, no one cares about that stuff. Yeah, keep him there for now. Um, who do we want here? I don't know. Who do we want? Think designers? I'm going to go heavy on planes. Uh, stuff's all okay. Political advisor goes up. You know what? We could probably grab him last. Minister on a portfolio. So a guy without a portfolio. Or Ribbentrop, master. Impact goes down. More political power. Improve relations. I feel like we're going to need him eventually. We'll increase the chance of other nations to accept our offers and demands by 25%. Oh, we can't get this guy yet. Mm. Um, Speer. I love Speer. Speer's... God. can't believe it took me this long to actually play UMC mod. Mm. I want to get some more army XP. Eventually, air XP will be fine. Uh, army XP gain daily plus 0. 0.15. I really want to have a lot of planes. Um, well, 0. 0.1. A little more speed. Not bad. This Engineer on Jaeger. Supply consumption goes down, which is not bad. Shauna, huh? You guys all cost a little bit of political power too, as well, though. Rommel, Adam, Milch. Uh, maybe we'll wait for that stuff. Research speed is not bad. We have a penalty to carriers. Oh, where is it? Growing propaganda. In Inexperience carrier constructions. That's why. Oh, apologies for taking so long with this. Uh, what, do I, what do I want? Industrial concern. You know, this one would be bad to get right now. Anyways. Fuel refineries, research speed. We're gonna need a lot of fuel. As much as I love Krupp, Krupp is awesome. Industrial research speed, fuel refineries, IG Farben. Will that help us out immediately? I don't want to lose any political power yet. So. But we can get one of these guys too. I don't want to lose any weekly war support yet. That doesn't seem really worth it, so. Hmm. Oh, we get Reinhard? Oh. Yeah. Or maybe we have to get Albert Speer first. Uh, actually, you know, Shock. I want to get. Wait, to get, wait, let's wait to get Shock. Theorists, eh? Hmm. How's it? Not bad. Oh, the blonde. Oh, boy. Well, let's see. Do I want to do that one immediately? I mean, that's really good for army XP. I mean, that's really good. How's it? Increase relations with the UGF. We could do something like that. Von Rundstedt, of course, too. And he gives a plus 0.15 political, uh, not political power, army XP every single day. Shorner. Oh, Shorner's not bad, though. Shorner's pretty good. I feel like we gotta go with Shorner. But nice Shorner, yeah. Main focus of the advisor is infantry warfare, mountain warfare. Von Monst oh, but Von Monstein. Yeah, it gets the same amount. More attack, regardless. I want armor, a lot of armor stuff. You know what? We're going to go with Von Monstein. In the evening, Hitler was sitting in his mansion in Berlin, preparing for the final meeting of the day. The sky was turning red as if it had preceded the coming of the two. Arguably most cunning and devoted national socialist men. Out of the few minutes that Halsbach uh, finally announced their arrival, Hitler invited them in and calmly watched all Reichsführer SS Heinrich Kimmler, accompanied by his SS Obergruppenführer, Reinhard Heydrich, walked into the room. But who's this man? The so-called blonde beast, similar as evil genius, or the young evil god of death? Reinhard Tristan Eugene Heydrich was born on the 7th of March, 1904. His father was a German nationalist who instilled patriotic ideas in his three children. The Hedrich household was strict as a youth he engages, engages younger brother, 
Heinz and Marker fencing duels. He excelled in his schoolwork, especially in science of the Reform Gymnasium. A talented athlete, he became an expert swimmer and fencer. He was shy and secure and was frequently bullied for his high pitched voice and rumored Jewish ancestry. Ooh. In 1922, Hages joined the Reichsmarine. He quickly rose to the ranks, however, and became notorious for his countless affairs. And one in 1930, he met Lena von Osten, who was already an NSDAP follower, engaging him in breathing a breach of promise. He was dismissed by Al Qaeda. He just joined the NSDAP on the 1st of June, 1931. Six weeks later, he joined the SS. Soon after, he began setting up a counterintelligence division of the SS, which led him to a meeting with Heinrich Himmler. He was so impressed by his ideas that he hired Heydrich immediately. In the mid-1932, Himmler appointed Heydrich, chief of the Sicherheitsdienst. Beginning in 1934, and at Hitler's request, Heydrich and Himmler began building a dossier on Stubabteilung leader Ernst Röhm in an effort to remove him as a rival for party leadership at Hitler's direction. Heydrich, Himmler, Göring, and Viktor Lutz drew up lists of those who should be killed. On the 30th of June, 1934, the SS and Gestapo acted and coordinated mass arrests that continued for two days, also known, also known as a Night of the Long Knives. Heydrich's loyalty and organization skills during these actions secured him the post of Himmler's right hand, an immense power which he never hesitates to use. We need every capable man we can get, especially one like the Blonde Beast. Oh, good God, yes. And with some outdated destroyers and whatnot, whatever. No one really cares right now. And you know what? Let's grab one thing of this too. Uh, who do we want to buy from? We want to buy from Brazil. At least one, because we can really not hurt our close air support production. And we should be doing an okay -ish amount of damage. Not a ton of air XP we're getting right now, but you know what? Cast is right now so broken. I love it. Shock is next. I want shock. Shock, 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 shock. Yes. Autonomy from building. What is that? Huh. Voyage Planner. In 1933, Alfred Adolf Hitler had laid down his foreign policy priorities as natural antagonism towards the Soviet Union. In the fall of 35, various business leaders complained to Hitler about the overwhelming costs of the rearmament. Only for him and Goring to speak about the necessity of preparing for the coming war against the Union the, of the Soviet Socialist Republics. Eventually, in 1936, in response to a growing crisis in the German economy caused by the strains of rearmament, Hitler issued the four year plan, Memorandum, Voyage Plan. Ordering Goring to carry out the four year plan to have the German economy ready for war within the next four years. The four year plan favored both the protection of agriculture and the promotion of autarky, economic independence of the Reich. During 1936, economic crisis, the German government was divided into two factions, with one, the so called free market faction, centered around the Reich's president, or Reich's bank president, Hallenmal Schott, and the Prize Commission of Dr. Karl Friedrich Gordler, a call for decreased military spending and a turn away from the autarky policies, and another faction around Goring calling for the opposite. The decision will often be made about which faction will be preferred and will take up the mantle of the Villas plan. Goring? Shock's faction. Hmm. I want shock. Oh, maybe we can't get shock. Didn't it? Oh, I don't know which one historically is. Uh, I wish it could tell us, like, historically this was the option, but it's not. Remove economic stagnation, which is what would be good to do. Ooh. Two factions. We're gonna go with Goring. We gotta go with Goring, right? Because this one gives us a lot of civvies. Reichswerke, Hume, and Goring. Following effects? Not bad. Propaganda will be improved? Nice. Refineries will be nice and all, but not super extremely necessary. Yep, so. Hume, and Goring, Vecca. We must rid ourselves of the fickle influence of private capitalists. Therefore, we'll form an industrial conglomerate under our control or oversee growth in the mining and steel sectors, as well as we'll form the backbone of our military industry. I'm still gonna grab them. Oh, we got three here. Not bad. Hmm, we can wait for that one. Ah, uh, Sudan land. I'm not too worried about that yet. Nice. MFO builds. This will be it. Hmm. Underlying German factions, huh? Rogan is obvious, huh? Not bad. Keep building. Keep building. Keep building. Ooh, we got another military factory done. Beautiful. How is Italy doing so poorly down there? Also, we're making some really cheap divisions right now. Just because we need them. we be led by Von Blomberg. Uh, him leading this probably would not be the best idea. Because I want him to lead something else. But for now, uh, Von Blomberg is fine. Whatever. Because we're just going to poop out tons of divisions here. There you go. And here we really care about, not too much. You are going to be our... Oh, infantry leaders up here. That's interesting. Panzer expert, yeah. 
we go. Political shifting, that's fine, whatever. Spat does not have enough influence yet. So with this, basically, uh, we'll get quite a bit more political power. And quite a bit more, hopefully, stability. Uh, a little more stability, probably, so. Minus two for the UGF. Okay, that's, a, that's okay. Oh, Ethiopia's gone. God dang it. How else are we going to get our stability? Or more air XP? We just lost 50 political power. Bactria Himmler suggests an increase of funds for war preparations. With an ideological war on the horizon and the survival of the Third Reich and stake in the near future, Reichsfuhrer Heinrich Himmler Daddy recently approached Reichsfuhrer in order to persuade him to put forward plans for expansion of military production. Now that he's a strain on supplying troops on the front lines once the righteous fight will break off, German High Command is also surprisingly agreeing with Himmler for once, expressed great enthusiasm in this, and volunteering a portion of engineer companies to speed up the construction of new military industries. More than enough resources for the military right now? Good idea to be prepared. Ah. Yeah, sounds good to me. GDF Hoggins. Um, I do want to make sure that we are good to go. Yeah, I'm not, not going to do that one for now. Um, extend the use of propaganda. Because we want to make sure we're ready for Spain. Adolf Hitler is a char characteristic charismatic man, capable of pulling crowds. He'll perform his speeches on the most important events in the Reich and will raise and rise the morale of our inhabitants. Oh. Be spare. I'll put by four. Give me this one too. We'll be fine. Not bad. Nothing here different? Nope. On fresh. Oh, we will be going down mobile warfare. And actually, I almost never go to the right side, but we're going to go to Blitzkrieg this time. If we get enough planes, we should be okay to go with that side, so. Maple tree signed. Um, Maxim. Himmler's loyalists. Von Klug. Cut student. Ah, oh, student. There we go, student. Nice. Von Bock, I love Von Bock. I'm popular in the government though. Motion costs. Ugh. Him and loyalists. Von Kruger. Hmm. Steiner. Felix Steiner. Von Schwepp. How oh, was this? Von Schweppenberg. Hauser, Dietrich. Modell. Milch. No, I'll go with Milch. Why not? Reichswerke Hemmergoing is an industrial conglomerate of the Reich, established in order to extract and process domestic iron ores from the Salzgitter uh, that were deemed uneconomical by the privately held steel mills. Steel mills. The state-owned Reichswerke is seen as a vehicle of hastening growth in oil mining and steel output regarding or regardless of private capitalist plans and opinions, which ran contrary to Adolf Hitler's strategic vision. Before its formation, three quarters of iron ore processed in Germany was imported. Domestic ores reserved in the Salzgitter area were deemed to be of too poor quality to be economical. Demand for iron and steel rose in line with the, military, the rise of military spending, further increasing dependence on imports. In 1936, Goring learned that the Stewarts and Lloyds foundry in Corby had successfully smelted low-grade uh, ores. The new technology removed the barriers for Goring's plans. Soon after that, Goring announced that domestic ore, iron, and steel program had become a national priority and that he would not tolerate hesitation or obstruction by private owners of the resources. As radical calls improved his own political weight and silenced the opposition, his aim of bringing the economy in line with Hitler's strategic plans was fully supported by the party press. In the future, Reichsvecke shall continue to expand upon its influence in iron business, as well as increase its own military production. Reichsvecke will secure stable and quality steel production. And they're not as nice war yet. NC, we're not there, definitely not there yet. It's power for nationalists. Men and women across all of Europe watches Germany rise from the ashes and are surely eager to join us under the Reich's power. By making the right decisions, we can gain valuable support from non Germanic countries. Oh, we get three trained generals and power for nationalists. Nice! Whoa. That's pretty strong. He's trustworthy for now. Oh, Party Council, uh, we'll get there eventually. Mm, I like the output, I really do. And to get industrial research to be there, anyways, you know what? Let's go and check that guy for now. Or that company, whatever. we we'll go with two, we'll go to four, we'll go to three, we'll go to four, we'll go to five. And attack the bombers are not bad, but we'll get a whole mess of fighters first. Civilian trains are fine, that's all fine, that's all fine. We need a lot of that too. Thank you very much. Enemy four bells are due, whatever. Open up state affairs. Why not? Now that we've gained a complete independence from the Allies with our island militarized again, we can look out to further help our nation proper. Or prosper. I'd love to live in Drown, but not yet. We do have a cup of coffee here to keep us nice and warm, though. With political shifting. Uh, Albert does not lack. You know, penalties right now. We've got a lot of penalties from the UGF. 
No, I'll try once, why not? They're very wary of us. Wehrmacht, Luftwaffe, Kriegsmarine, non-Nazi citizens. Our commander of the Wehrmacht. Blomberg and Fresh was forced to retire. Interesting. Reorganize the Abwehr. Proclaim the Gross Deutsches Reich, which we will have to do eventually. Very nice. Thank you. Powerful nationalists, yes. Open up state affairs, yes. What is this? The Unholy Alliance, probably not. The Finnish Lion. Ah, oh, we can wait for that one. So we're ready for this stuff over here, which is nice. Um, military cooperation with China. By our Japan is not a puppet. Has not accepted Japanese cooperation. I want to do that one, but... Chinese three-year plan. The common goal unites us. Uh, we'll probably do this one. If they accept our offer, we won't be able to cooperate with the Republic of China. I think I'll do this one. Why not? This one's five days. And like I said, I have no idea if we're doing this correct. Hitler Jung parade in celebrations. Hitler Jung organized a major par parade with local politicians and party officials in attendance, as well as some generals from the OKW. Uh, the parade was a success and impressed both the populace and the party officials, even though some still express their doubt about the teachings of uh, Hitler Jung and see their fears as confirmed. A bright example of the Thousand Years Reich we are fighting for. So good. Oh, this stuff would be really good to get. 36. Uh, Reinforce rate. Why not? How do we get this better? Unaligned German faction. Political actions. A censorship. No, I kind of doubt it. That would really do anything there. The is the Abwehr. Oh. The Abwehr is a German military intelligence service for the Reichswehr and the Wehrmacht functioning from 1920. Despite the fact that the Treaty of Versailles prohibited us altogether from establishing an intelligence organization on our own, the Abwehr was formed as an espionage group in 1920 with the, within the Ministry of Defense. The initial purpose of the Abwehr was defense against foreign espionage, an organizational role which later evolved considerably. Under General Kurt von Schleicher, the individual military services intelligence units were combined in and in 1929, centralized under his Ministry of Defense, forming the foundation of the more commonly understood manifestation of the Abwehr. The Ministry of Defense was renamed the Ministry of War in 1935 and then replaced by Adolf Hitler altogether with a new OKW. We could do that, but let's come over here and actually let's get somebody that um, the UGF will like. Maybe. Uh, no. Just in case. Peri periodically increased relations with the UGF. Definitely not him yet. I mean, we only two left, really. No one likes the UGF. How to get rid of the UGF? Get this for unaligned. This is. I don't like that. I know it doesn't really matter. Uh, Or just say, screw and get Heinrich Himmler now. We'll unlock the SS recruitment divisions. Just five equals time damage. We can wait for that guy, though. Uh, nice. Very good. They have political power. Yeah. Wait, having Russ as a political advisor for five years will lead to re-education of a population which provides us with significant bonuses. Do we get more weekly stability? Or war support, not yet. Every five years. Ooh. I don't know. I kind of want to see what would happen for five years. In 1941, we'll finally get some benefits. You know what? We'll try him. That's going to be a probably bad decision to do. But we'll try him. We'll try him out. Hmm... Nuclear stuff. Uh, research for that stuff. Division of Attack and Defense. Von Lee would be very good. Land action cost goes down by 10%, but I want mobile warfare. More Attack and Defense. Daily Army XP gain. Uh, let's go with you. It's fine. Extraction, yes. Um, 37 is not worth going there just yet. Engineering, of course. All this stuff over here. Plane stuff, we are all okay. Uh, free repair. Integrated officer schools, civilian bureau. Sure, why not? A press integration. That sounds like good. Sounds good to us. Common goal units is all. Anschluss. Put them out. See what happens. Just train. Need way more guns, though. Mobile warfare. Nice. We're good. Which is here. Why not? The German army has uh, been for a long time one of the best trained in the whole world. We will stay true to our heritage and make sure that the Wehrmacht won't lose a single battle. We'll be recalled in the next few years. We already have invested enough here. Um, two years. Won't be recalled in the next two years. 38. We can still release him. You know, we'll take it. We'll be useful as a testing grounds. If we can't re recall him, that's okay. For a while. I approach Japan to approach a strengthened relationship. As they should. Ah, good. Just in time! 
support national Spain. The Spanish are in a civil war, and we must ensure that the right side wins. We will provide guns, trucks, artillery, men, whatever it will Franco and his phalanges need to win. As a reward, we will gain a strong potential ally to support our future goals. They better be able to... They better say yes. So we can't do this until, like, for a long time, so... Three, oh, five divisions. Nice. So all but, like... Uh, you, really, you two. Send Heinz. Even though you're not Franco, but whatever. Uh, Heinz. Beautiful. So we can send 221 planes. All sense of fighters, of course. And where did these guys go? Are you... Stupid, yes. You're one. Nice. Beautiful. Just do as much damage as you possibly can. Games, yes. We love the games. We're gonna have a good time here. Still weary, eh? It's all good. Naval stuff, yes. Fleet and Bing. Uh, for now, let's go with that side. That's fine. Oh, that's not very much political power every day. Now, is it at all? Uh, von Frisch, a lot of other people. Von Manstein, von Ross is really hurting us. Appeasing Speer hurts us as well. Um, so, something we gotta be very careful about. We don't get that much more political power. Other than that, I will probably go this guy. More political advisor, political co power costs. Uh, main focus of the advisor, more political power. Plus 0.25. Political advisor, which means it should not increase that. Uh, actually, let's read this first. The Fuhrer is older, compulsory two-year period of military conscription. Between 1933 and 35. Hitler's a focus on solidifying the party's control over Germany and building support amongst his people. He also began to rebuild Germany's military, keeping it secret because he didn't know how the world would react to his apparent violation of the Treaty of Versailles in 1919. By March 35, Howard was no longer a secret as Hitler publicly announced his intentions to rebuild the German Air Force, reinstate conscription, and rearm the nation. He reassured other world leaders that these were not violations of the Treaty of Versailles, but purely defensive measures. In a speech to the Reichstag, he said, The principal effect of every war is to destroy the flower of the nation. Germany needs peace and desires peace. He also promised that the German government is ready to agree to any limitation which agrees or leads to the abolition of the heaviest arms, especially suited for aggression, such as the heaviest artillery and the heaviest tanks, and he watched, warned that whoever lights a torch of war in Europe can wish for nothing but chaos. The speech was praised both at home and abroad. The army now is in full motion. One last thing needs to be done is to introduce a compulsory two-year period of military conscription through which we will keep a safe flow or inflow of manpower to the Wehrmacht. Full militarization of Germany must begin now. Add limited conscription. We lose political power to get more population, though, which is nice. Focus on other aspects of militarization first, which means we have to go with that way. The military junta accepts material help. Great, and now we can support National Spain. It hurts our factory output, but that's, that's okay. And send attaches to National Spain as well. You might as well. We want them to win. We've got a lot of political power here. Um, we might as well reorganize the lab there. Or obve, I should really say. Ooh. Or just go to straight to war economy. Which actually, ooh, I didn't realize that it actually hurt us. Military factory construction speed goes way up, but you lose weekly stability and war support. Consumer goods factory just goes down by 5%. We're looking not bad. Um, weekly war support. Does this go up at, or down at all right now? It doesn't look like it's really hurting us too much. Not bad so far. I did, what, did say I want to grab this guy too. Oh, finger slipped. And we have enough for it. So two. Point four eight. This guy's going to hurt us and everything else. So right for now, Martin Bowman will be fine. No issues with him. Maybe someday, but not yet. I'll help him out, why not? Good. Go ahead. Him the presses for a better SS army positions. There's always a clear distinction between the Wehrmacht and the Schutzstaffel ever since the rise uh, to power then as the AP, and, and this had already led to a purge once. But despite that, Himmler asked again today to give a SS general a better position in the Wehrmacht against OKW recommendations. Certainly, the qualities of the generals are good, but ever since Rom's dream of supplanting the Wehrmacht within, with the SA, both Wehrmacht and Luftwaffe are, are nervous. They're seeing such important positions filled with the loyalties to the SS, not to the German Reich or the fear. Schutzstaffel is our most elite fighting force, and we must further empower it. Willem Keitel, ooh. Strengthen the SS would only just stabilize the situation in the army even more. Where are we with this one? So here. He's already at 46. Um, as much as I want Kaito to get more strength, we'll go with this one for now. It's fine. 0.93 is still not bad. And we're doing the KDF Wagner. Well, our citizens purchase their own future people's car through a saving scheme in which we will, turn, we will use the finance and construction of the factories that will eventually contribute in building these cars. Beautiful. Go ahead. Let's go. Destroy them at all costs. Nice. We gotta do some of these guys too, which are not very good, but whatever. Um, yeah. I mean, if we're built, it's costing us quite a bit. 
quite a bit, not gonna lie. KDF Wagen's not bad. Oh, I can do that one, but wind of often projects. One of Hitler's biggest dreams, a weapon for far superior to any other yet developed. Inventing such a weapon would certainly turn the tide of any war in our favor, so without a doubt, we should increase funding for these research projects. Whether it's a self-propelled bomb, a jet aircraft, or a panzer as big as a battleship, it should be perfect for, for propaganda. Primary focus of German scientists. Nice. Very good, so good. Oh, actually, planes. Are you struggling here? Um, keep bombing them. Get a ton of army XP. Tons and tons and tons and tons and tons and tons. 17, 37, 42. Not bad. Keep a balance for now as best you can. Of course, this whole combat here is going to be kind of a pain in the butt, but that's alright. Actually, I think I'm next. I did this before. Uh, we probably want to go die bombing. Yeah. Where's that bombing next? Oh, press integrations. We're good. Weekly stability goes up. Ooh. Media manipulation. I love it. Officer schools. Why not? Field radios. Not bad. 1936 still. Nothing that we really want yet. But artillery? Sure, why not? Into war artillery. Gonzalez, eh? Gains a ton of XP, but primary focus of German scientists. With our expanding research facilities, we can focus our funds in different research sectors. Most interesting are the works of Werner Heisenberg and Werner von Braun. Werner Karl Heisenberg, a German theoretical physicist and one of the key pioneers of quantum mechanics, is working on a nuclear weapon program known as Uranverein. As well as of developing an ultimate weapon capable of wiping out the whole cities. Usable not only in the times of war, though, thought, this device serves a deterrent as well. The young Werner von Braun represents his work in this in his thesis, Construction, Theoretical, and Experimental Solution to the Problems of the Liquid Propellant Rocket, already by the end of 1934. His group had successfully launched two liquid fuel rockets <clears throat> that rose to heights of 2.2 and 3.5 kilometers. The use of his work seems endless, from a long range strategic weapon to a first uh, uh, spaceflight program. Secondly, his department is in charge of testing first rocket aircraft. Both leading scientists desperately desire more funds for their work, and it's up to us when, which one should begin priorities. But Werner Karl Heisenberg's nuclear research? Uh, Werner von Braun's rocket research, yes. That one. Okay, yeah, let's grab some of this too. Five research slots, not bad. And we're struggling here quite a bit, but whatever. We're down to 17. Even more. Um, do you own any, any other air bases here, or what? Oh, I got rid of another one. Good. Good, good, good. Beautiful. MFO bills are due, which sucks again, but whatever. Build, build, build. Only 101 factories is not enough. Not enough. Get more guns. We need way more guns. Uh, division wise, how are we looking? Not bad. Actually, just do this. That goes, goes well. Train. And they should be led by whom? Mm, Bombach can have it. As well as Steiner. No. Uh, or infantry people. More people good on defense. Von Witzleben? Yes. Nice. And we'll convert on these guys too eventually as well. We can do it now, but now we're okay. I'm going to say screw these two divisions and save every ah, save all the tanks. That's fine. Save the tanks. No. Hitler Union membership made compulsory for all boys. Our children can now be properly educated and trained to save the German Deutsche Nation. A young officer shows unusual leadership skills. In a meeting with Reichsführer Hitler, Heinrich Himmler handed him a file describing the career of a young promising Hitler Jürgen Kidder and his leadership in H HJ exercise gone wrong. His abilities allowed his group to return to safety, if not a bit bruised, to the camp. With additional training under his belt, Himmler asked Hitler to promote this great example of the German people on a faster track to general. That certainly has its benefit. Or, uh, even if many of the OKW who have worked hard for years to reach their position will feel slighted by the fast promotion of that young man. One train general. Go oh, smokies. Oh, they're more worse for it. It's fine. Shifting. Not bad. Do I just have? Oh, we need this one too. But, uh, which one's nice? Engine improvements, Heisenberg's decision. 
Uh, this would not be bad either. We get more rubber and fuel. It'd be nice. It'd be very nice. Grass on the shelf. Rex Autobahn. Uh, since its inception in 1933, the Reichsautobahn project has been a glorious success. The construction efforts have reduced unemployment, and the wide roads stand as a monument to Germany's economic recovery. Much work remains to be done, however. Don't just say it. A Deutsche Seele, the German army, is a land component of the armed forces of the Reich. A German army equipped, organized, and trained following a single doctrine and permanently unified under one command in 1871. During the unification of Germany under the leadership of Prussia from 1871 into 1919, the title Deutsches Heer was the official name of our armed forces. Following the defeat in the Weltkrieg and the end of the empire, the main army was dissolved from 1921 to 35. The name of the German land forces was the Reichsheer. The hail was longly limited by the Treaty of Versailles, however, only 17 months after our Fuhrer Adolf Hitler announced the German rearmament program in 1935, the army reached its projected goal of 36 divisions. The hail's operational doctrine emphasizes sweeping pincer and lateral movements, meant to destroy the enemy forces as quickly as possible. This approach, referred to as Blitzkrieg, is an operational doctrine instrumental in the success of any future conflicts. Blitzkrieg is considered by many historians as having its roots in precepts developed by Fuhrer, Liedelhardt, and von Secht and even ancient prototypes practiced by Alexander, Genghis Khan, and Napoleon, Reich's Arme, focuses on achieving high combat performance rather than high organizational efficiency. It emphasizes adapt adaptability, flexibility, and decentralized decision-making. Officers and NCOs are selected based on character and trained towards decisive combat leadership. Good combat performance is being rewarded. The military strength of the Reich's hair is managed through mission-based tactics. Auftragstaktik an almost uh, proverbial discipline. Once any operation begins, whether offensive or defensive, speed in response to changing circumstances is considered more important than careful planning and coordination of new plans. The Heer has a long way to go to be fully expanded and prepared to face our foes. However, Deutsche Mental collapse will surely prevail. The Krieg liegt in Deutschem Blut. So good. And we're going to go this way. Usually, I almost always go this way. Actually, I've always only gone this way. I've never done Blitzkrieg, I think. But we're going to go Blitzkrieg for this time. Because we can. Oh, slowly winning here. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Good. Actually, can we do Anschluss yet? Military maneuvers in the Rhineland. That'd be really good. Yeah. Alright, so with that in mind. Can I convert you guys to this one? How much manpower do we have now in the field? It's a couple days, 400 to 477, artillery. Oh, that's nice. It's better. Oh, we have more manpower, too. Nice. Gestapo reveals and prevents assassination of Hitler. Achtung, Achtung, important message. The assassination on Glorious Führer was averted by our skilled and low Gestapo forces. The information is still unclear, but this is what we know so far. This assassination was prepared by Helmut Hirsch, a German Jew and advocate of Strasserism. Born in Germany, he moved to Prague, where he enrolled as a student of architecture at the Deutsche Technische Hochschule, after the law that expelled all Jews from the German universities. Shortly after arriving in Prague, Hirsch became involved in the Black Front, a nationalist group of anti-Hitler German expatriates who advocated Strasserism. He was encouraged to introduce himself to its head, Otto Strasser, by his mentor Tusk. On December 20th, 1936, after telling his family he was going skiing with friends, he returned to Germany with a travel permit obtained on the false premise that he was visiting his mother, who he claimed was ill. In his naivety, he didn't realize German authorities knew his family had moved to Prague. It's likely that the German agents of Prague had been watching him for some months, but were unable to arrest him while he remained on Czech soil. Hirsch's handler was Strasser's right-hand man, Heinrich Grunov, who used the nom de guerre de Beer. According to the plan, Hirsch was to place two suitcases containing explosives at one or two sites in Nuremberg, the suggested targets were the NSDAP headquarters and the Office of Printing Plant of Der Sturmer. Gunnar instructed Hirsch to buy a round-trip ticket from Prague to his hometown, Stuttgart, but to travel only as far as Nuremberg. There he was to meet a contact who would give him baggage claims tickets for the two suitcases, which had been smuggled into Germany. Instead, he went to Stuttgart. We had arranged to meet an old friend. Hirsch arrived in Stuttgart late in the evening of December 20th. When his friend failed to meet him as arranged, he checked into the Hotel Pelican, across the street from the railway station. In the early morning hours of the December 21st, agents of the Gestapo arrested him in his hotel room. Testimony at the trial made it clear that there was at least one double agent in the Black Front who had informed on Hirsch. A witness for the prosecution described the plot in detail that no one but a trusted member of the Black Front could have known. Under questioning, Hirsch did not deny any involvement in the plot. Below, the public defender signed to his case argued that he should be he should be acquitted since he had never carried it out. When asked whether he would have given the chance he had have attempted to assassinate Adolf Hitler, Hirsch acknowledged that he would. He will be decapitated for his crimes. Ah, now it's some cold coffee. We might still cancel the bells actually soon, we'll see. Czech's global arms export. Czechoslovakia is one of the biggest, and not the biggest, arms export in the world. And now we might have the opportunity to set up our own arms contract. From guns to tanks to planes, everything can be shipped here for a fair certain price. We currently possess more than 100 factories, which will allow us to order equipment for unlimited price, We're currently paying zero. Order equipment will be delivered each 120 days. If joined in the already ongoing round, we may have to wait until the next one begins. Based on conditions for future contracts. Um, hmm. 
Okay, well, whatever. Everyone hit on him. Attrition sucks, but whatever. Further Reich's Autobahn expansion. The Reich's Autobahn system is the beginning of the German Autobahns under the Reich. There have been previous plans for the control of access highways in Germany under the Weimar Republic, and two have been constructed, but work had yet to be started on long distance highways. After their previously opposing plans for a highway network, the party embraced them after coming to power and presented the project as Hitler's own idea. They were termed Adolf Hitler's Roads, Der Strasse, and Adolf Hitler's, and presented it as a major contribution to the reduction of unemployment. Other reasons for the project included enabling Germans to explore and appreciate the country. as a strong aesthetic element to the execution of the project under the Third Reich. Military applications although to a lesser extent than that has often been thought. A permanent monument to the Third Reich, often compared to the pyramids, in general promotion of motoring as a modernization that in itself had military applications, a few are performed. The first ceremonial shoveling of dirt on, dis on de September 27th, 1933 at Frankfurt, and work officially began simultaneously at multiple sites throughout the Reich the following spring. The first finished stretch between Frankfurt and Darmstadt opened on May 19th, 1935. Currently, the work continues to reach the first 1,000 kilometers, and while the main road is re reaching its opening, we saw some sources that spare to expand the Reichs, extend the Reich's Autobahn even further. East? South? West? Sources elsewhere. Hmm. Hashin, Westfalen, Oberbayern. Well, let's take a look. Franken would be a complete waste in the south, right? Württemberg, Niederbayern, uh, Hinterpommern, Ostmark, Niedersch. Uh, that'd be good for like a slight more um, infrastructure for supply stuff. South or west? Best follow the vessel M's. Ooh, that would be really good for best follow Hessian and Ostrinland. Even building more stuff up there. But I want to do the east because that'll help us with speed over here. So that's nice. It's very nice. Anschluss. The Anschluss or union with Austria is a long-held goal of the German people. Although forbidden by the Treaty of Versailles, the time has finally come to bring it about. Let us offer the Austrians a chance of sharing a glorious destiny. Let's see if we can actually do that. Mm -hmm. Future pursue the stall pack with Italy. Stall pack, formerly known as the Pact of Friendship and Alliance between Germany and Italy, is a military political alliance between Italy and Germany. The pact consists of two parts. The first section was open declaration by continuing trust and cooperation between Germany and Italy, while the second, a secret supplemental protocol, encouraged a union of policies concerning the military and economy, pro German rights, and the Czech Sudanland. Oh boy! The situation in Sudanland was always very, very quite troublesome. After the division of Austria-Hungary and short-lived independent German Sudan land, the territory was eventually annexed by Czechoslovakia in, in 1921. The population of multi-ethnic Czechoslovakia comprises 6.6 million Czechs, 3.2 million Germans, 2 million Slovaks, 0.7 million Hungarians, and half a million Ruthenians, 300,000 300, Jews, and 100,000 Poles as well as Gypsies, Croats, and other ethnic groups. German speakers represented a third of the population of the Bohemian lands, about 20 Three, a little over 23% of the population of the whole republic. The Sudan lands possessed huge chemical works and lignite mines, as well as textile China and glass factories. To the west, the triangle of historic ethnic German settlements surrounding Eger was the most active area for the pan German nationalism. Many Germans felt that the new constitution failed to fulfill what the Czechs had promised in the Treaty of St. Germain in Lai of 1919 because there was too few minority rights. However, the gradually accepted remaining in Czechoslovakia and took part in the first elections of 1920. By 1929, though, only a small number of G Sudeten German de deputies, most of them members of the German National Party, supported by the pro 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 property classes, and the German National Socialist Workers Party, remained opposed to the Czechoslovak government. Natural sentiment flourished however, among Sudeten German youths who had a variety of organizations, such as the Older Deutsche Turn Turnverband and uh, Schutzverein, the Kamerad uh, Kameradschaftsbund, the National Socialist Volkspot, and the Bereitschafts. The Sudan and German nationalists, particularly the Nazis, expanded their activities after the Depression started when Adolf Hitler appointed a chancellor, as chancellor in Germany in 1933. The Czechoslovak government prepared to suppress the Sudan and SD NSDAP party. In the autumn of 1933, the Sudan and Nazis dissolved their organization and the German nationals were pressured to do likewise. The government expelled German nationals and the Sudan and NSDAP from local government positions. On October 1st, 1933, Konrad Heinlein was deputy Karl Hermann Frank, aided by the other members of the Kameradschaftsbund, a youth organization of mystical orientation, created a new political organization, absorbed most of the former nas German nationals, nationals and Sudeten National Socialists in 1935. The Sudeten German Home Front uh, became the Sudeten German Party and embarked on an active propaganda campaign. Its goal was to bring Sudeten Germans closer to the Reich and to save the situation in Czechoslovakia as much as possible. And they were already starting, and it is reported that on the orders of the Fuhrer, Widespread riots across Sudan and lands are happening. The goal is to point out the Czech oppression of the Sudan and Germans and their will to make their way home to the Reich. Konrad Henlein's goal is to show the world that Sudan and Germans are now the Reich's Germans. Or will be at the very least. So good. Now, so supporting them, we're going to move, we get more stuff, MFO bills. Um, trade uh, situation. Begin official cooperation with the SDP. Uh, cool. And if you wonder about that, please go right ahead. When selected, good. 
increase. Oh, the current resistance is in Sudanland's 15, the more resistance in Sudanland, the less likely allies will be able to back Czechoslovakia. Currently, zero divisions, the more divisions that they possess, the more popular decisions will be. Good. German nationalism. That's compliance. So here, they have quite a bit of compliance, so that's interesting. I wish you could see other people's compliance, but yeah, that's kind of cool. Return a fellow Germans home. Form Sudent and Fry Coal. Oh, that's cool. Gain eight divisions, but ready to deploy in times of need. Uh, Sudent Deutsches Fry Corps shall be a prime military national socialist organization founded on the direct order from the Fuhrer, composed mainly of ethnic German citizens of Czechoslovakia with pro party sympathies, who shall be sheltered, trained, and equipped by the German army. Sudent Deutsches Fry Corps will also be a factual successor to the Fry Villiger Schutzdienst. Also known as Alden Gruppe, an organization that had been established by the Student and German Party in Czechoslovakia unofficially in 1933. I go and do that one first. Let's wait to get to that level first. Ooh, we have like no political power. Holy crap. Russ is hurting us so badly. Holy crud. And Himmler's actions, Goring's actions. Wait, what's going on up here? Oh, good god. Increase the democratic popularity when removed. Jesus Christ. Anyways. Let's take a look. Supply wise. Oh, so it's the volunteer there. South is always pretty bad to fight in. A supply point right there, maybe. There you go. Do what you can. No wonder we keep losing political power. I might just cancel the MFO bills. Like, holy crap, it's not good. Holy crap, we need a lot more guns. But what else is new? Let me go down here first. Can they actually pierce us? No, but we'll see. Fine for now. Slightly better. Let's do that. It's not bad. Undisputed to officer school. It's happy 1937, everybody. Let's grab some more. What? Research speed. Yes. No. Industry. Output. Yes. Austria accepts your entrance. Also, I should. The idea of an Anschluss, a united Austrian Germany that would form a greater Germany, began after the unification of Germany excluded Austria and the German Austrians from the Prussian dominated German Empire in 1871. Following the end of World War I with the fall of the Austro Hungarian Empire in 1918, the newly formed Republic of German Austria attempted to form a union with Germany, but the Treaty of Saint Germain and the Treaty of Versailles forbade both the union and the continued use of the name Deutsch, a Deutsch Österreich, and stripped Austria of some of its territories, such as the Sudetenland. Now, less than 20 years later, the Westerners simply do not have the power to stop. Fulfilling our dream of across Deutschland. The Austrian people desire the unity of the Reich, and so we united. The German Reich is no longer willing to tolerate the suppression of the 10 million Germans across its borders. With a direct command from above, the Wehrmacht crossed the border into Austria. The troops were greeted by cheering Austrians with Nazi salutes, Nazi flags, and flowers. Although the invading forces were badly organized and coordination among the units was poor, it mattered little because the Austrian government ordered the Austrian Bundesheer not to resist. That afternoon, Hitler riding in a car across the border at his birthplace, Braunau am Inn, with a 4,000 man bodyguard. In the evening, he arrived at Linz and was given an enthusiastic welcome soon after. Says Inquart and announced the revocation of Article 88 of the Treaty of Saint Germain. The Gross Deutsches Reich shall rise from the ashes, unser Länder sind vereint. Beautiful. Reduce the cost of MFO bills, good. Beautiful. Deutsches Reich unites with Austria. The loop is tightening. We've lost 50 political power for nothing, I think. Pull outside division. Ooh. Now that's not bad. We actually have to make a lot more armored cars, though, but whatever. Because I don't think we're making any right now. You know what? Spare one. That's fine. Go, go like, uh, go two. Like that. Because we need a lot of things here anyway, so. Beautiful. Demand O and Muncha Conference. That's not going to be bad either. Ooh, more political power. Holy crap. We could use that political power, too. Um. From the Condor Legion. 
Werner Daddy Molders. Ooh. The Fear Prinzip. Limit Hitler's interference. Huh. I'd like a new Fear. Whoa. It's Ben Levin's ROM now. I'm going to wait for that one. That's from the stuff that Molotov Ribbon Drop Pack. We can do that one. We don't really have to. Hmm. It's not bad, too. I do want to do this one, though. Treaty with the USSR first. Uh, we can pursue a new research treaty with the USSR in order to develop chiefly better tanks. If they agree, we can reopen the tank school we closed down in common in 1933. So if a cooperation will, of course, mean that they will too benefit from innovations made. But that's okay, probably. Um, material designers. Production cost does go down. Artillery is not bad. Infantry equipment would be very good as well. Uh, it is 37. So keep that in mind. Can we do anything here in 37? Not too much. We can do this one too. 21 divisions. I did say I want to do this one too. Expand food, those issues of Fry Corps. Compliance growth in our states occupied by enemies. Sabotage activities. Reorganize Abvel. That would be bad. You only get 0.71. This as well. Regional white integration, we can wait. And we have O bells, where are we at? Gonna cost even more soon, too. Um, you know, let's see. German nationalism. A little more divisions. You know, let's do all that. Why not? Where are they at now? Himmler wishes to organize SS Parade in Berlin. Today, Himmler uh, would organize an SS Parade through Berlin, ending at the Brandenburg at Hall. While well, so lift the spirits and certainly call up some volunteers, both the OKW and the Reichsmarschall Goring are not impressed by the request and express doubt about Himmler's sincerity and see the SS as growing danger to their armed forces. We shall show all Germans how the true Herren Volk soldiers look. Remote shoot stoppable interest would only destabilize the country. Where is uh, Himmler at right now? He's at 54. Holy crap. Lower him a little bit more. Is it trustworthy? That's not bad. Oh, we're actually losing political power now, too. God dang it. Oh, it's because of all the other stuff we're doing. Okay. That makes sense. You guys. Um, there you go. Good model. Uh, tank stuff is not bad. I kind of want to get more fighter stuff just in case. More research would be pretty good. Cast would be pretty nice though, but you know, whatever. Limited conscription does hurt us. Those hurt us even more. It's not good. Chief of the Air Force. The other big power goes down. Oh, actually. Von Grime is not bad. Von Goring would be pretty good for reliability for aircraft and less production costs. More daily political power gain. Hurts our consumer goods though, which is not good. I don't like that. Right over here, political power. Dernitz. I kind of have to go with Dernitz, but I don't want to lose any political power yet, so we'll go with Mauser. And we don't have to spend political power on stuff, like, you know, whatever. Question of Yugoslavia. Following. Uh, the return of Austria to the Reich. Uh, let's go down to six. Uh, we now share a border with Yugoslavia. The government of Prince Paul has been fairly quiet about their stance on the proposed reordering of Europe. Perhaps we should remind them that the time will come when they must make a choice. A little bit of squeeze. Let's go with four here. Spain issued diplomatic protests. So they have lodged di strong diplomatic protests with our government regarding the presence of our attaches and nations that are currently in military conflict with. We demand the immediate recall of our military commission. Attaches will be sent wherever they please. Go. What? You know what? Force the attack. They only force defense? Well, we can force the attack. That makes no sense, bro. Yeah, definitely don't know much about the UMC mod here. Obviously. No fuel would be nice, but whatever. Force him. Even getting rid of one division would be very strong. Or, maybe yeah, not very strong, but it would be very beneficial. Oh, we're losing political power, god dang it. Four divisions is quite a few divisions to attack us with, but, you know, whatever. Alright, we're getting that one done. Anti tank might be really good to do as well. Um, oh, look at all this stuff here. Get some of this. Hi, Bob. Yeah, I'm sending you in two. Nice. Blitzkrieg Doctrine, not bad. 
gather foreign equipment. More attrition, but capture ratio. Modifier's not bad either. It's been the Lufafa. Wouldn't be bad. She's the Lufafa, thus possibly gaining him and going as a field marshal. I'm hungry. This is Gross of Aum Wirtschaft. Most prepared Germany for his destiny as a centerpiece of Europe. Our infrastructure will bind together with the west with the east and the south with the north. Well, nice political power. I'm just doing this for this stuff. I'm not really going to expand infrastructure yet. That's for later. That's an division. There you go. Any other planes yet? Oh, we got some stuff like that there. Keep training. Um, let's keep you there for now. Soviets accept German Soviet treaty. Our negotiations with the Soviet Union have been successful. An agreement has been reached where our nations will aid each other in the development of new armored units with a possible extension of other research areas in the future. This treaty will be a stepping stone to the future. Beautiful. Beautiful. As it should be. Holy crap, they really just want to die there, don't they? Point. Um, I just cancel them. That's fine. Go low. We got more than enough infantry divisions as is right now, so we just don't have enough equipment for anything. Beautiful. Not bad. All right. What's up next? Iberia is not bad. They got quite a few planes themselves, which is not good for us, but still. And fighting down here is going to be bad for tanks. So I think more towards the central region would probably be more beneficial. Let's take a look. I know this video is very long. It's just because there's a lot of reading that we got to get through, which is fine with me. I'm looking for supply points. Right there would be good if we could grab it. You know, we're still here. If we could grab it, that'd be great. Good. Alright, 1937. Anything else over here? Yes. The mill. Uh, let's grab this one. It's going to take a while to do this. So let's grab that one first. Bad, not bad. 37 stuff. Logistics, we're gonna definitely need that one too. There's line Hungary. That'd be good to start doing that one, yeah. Uh, Hungary's already in our sphere of influence, but we could easily sway them to our further side of our thinking, making sure that they're easily, more easily, easily, easily manipulable in the future. Should be a good thing to do, of course. Ah, good. Ah, it's right. As we planned. Of course, fighting in the hills and mountains is not good, but whatever. Yeah. Ah, cut off. I don't know, fighting in the hills and mountains here is not a good idea, but whatever. Oh, good. Very good. So good. Eventually, we, I mean, we do want to get, like, more infrastructure and stuff like here eventually, but, like, that's, uh, way in the future. Way, way, way in the future. Go with two military factories at a time now. Him press for better assets army positions. Well, um... Um, there's always a clear distinction between the Wehrmacht and the Schutzstaffel ever since the rise of power of the NSDAP, and this already led to purges once. Despite that, Hummel was asked today to give the SS General a better position in the Wehrmacht against OKW recommendations. Certainly the qualities of the General good, but ever since Rome's dream was to plan the Wehrmacht within both SA and the, uh, the Wehrmacht and the Waffle, nursing such important positions fill loyalty to the SS, not to the German right to the Fuhrer. Um, media personality for, uh, Friedrich. Oh, Friedemann. Good, sir. There's some stability, though. We have 100% here, though. Um, what do we got here? Hammer's actually securing German loyalty. Weekly change actually goes down. Okay, there. It's alright. Be still faithful. Be still faithful. Finding the mods is probably a bad idea with these types of divisions, but whatever. Not hungry. We're land Romania. Romania's already in our sphere of influence, but could easily sway them further to our way of thinking, making them even more manipulable in the future. Followed up with what? Secure vital resources from Sweden. 
The German's resources are limited. Hence, we have to reach out to other nations in order to assure that the German war economy can reach its full potential. Sweden is a perfect trading partner due to its richness and iron and proximity. It's, it's, there's, there, it is only logical to invest in that. Pretty much. And my apologies for stuttering and not speaking correctly. Now, what else can we do down here? Can you actually win here? Might as well try, right? Do more, please. Yes, thank you. Alright, the Stukas. Going up the coasts. Political shifting, align Romania. That's one, two. What else can we do around here? Oh, this would not be bad either. We could really use it for more rubber. West wall would not be bad either. Um, the Rhineland perfected up the Creek Doctrine. Not bad. Oh, so claims in Middle Africa. Ooh. You know, why not? Our African colonies have been badly taken from us. The treachery must be repaid with rich interest. We will revive the old Middle Africa plan. An idea of one huge state in Central Africa ruled by the German people. Why not? Oh, not bad. Interesting. Close air support, even better. Close air support. I want to max this all out. Oh, we're so close. Alicante, not bad. Trade. Um, resistance is 19. Gotta keep going that way for now. You both want out. Yeah. Let me start claims in Middle Africa. The glorious. Alicante. Beautiful. Guys, are all straight veterans, man. Love it. They accept this trade deal. This will boost a middle, uh, middle tower that shafts greatly. Briggs Marine Rearmament. That would be bad. We're going to do that one too. Uh, Admiral Tirpitz once built up a casualitial marine to that of a global power. Our once grand navy is now the laughing stock of European naval power, but with the Britain and French. Or Britain and France, shackled by the naval treaties, now will present the perfect opportunity for us to rise to our former glory. And they'll demand this on, on, on mutual conference. Potentially, maybe, yes. It was Amelia Earhart. Try that. Not bad. Not bad at all. Maybe just go here. They got the airbase. They don't need it. Guarantee they don't need it. Ah. Another war. Did they get involved in? No, oh, I'll take a look. Empire Manchukuo, huh? Do they have air bases? How many can we send? 300. I kind of doubt they have any plans. I could be very wrong. So send at least 100 over there. Um. Good review. Tactical bombers, just in case. Any other casts? No, not yet. So I'll just see you guys over here, anyways, for now. Only 200 could be there anyway. That's fine for now. Good. Rax Marshal Goring demands increase of Lufafa funding. The stronger Lufafa is, the easier we will wipe our enemies. All those funds are needed elsewhere. Yes, you can have it. Ah. 100%, 80%, not bad. 
Two at a time, even more. Ansbrusha von Middle Africa. Middle Africa is a name created for a geostrategic region in Central and East Africa. Much like Middle Europa, it articulates Germany's foreign policy aim. Prior to the Weltkrieg of bringing the region under German domination, then their strategic thinking was that if the region between the colonies of German East Africa, German Southwest Africa, and Cameroon could be annexed, a continuous entity could be created over the, covering the breadth of the African continent from the Atlantic to the uh, Indian Ocean. Given the richness of natural resources of the Congo Basin alone, this region was a crew considerable wealth to the colonizing power through the exploitation of natural resources, as well as contributing to other German aim of economic self-sufficiency. However, after the defeat in the Valkyrie, our African colonies were unrightfully taken from us. This, among all other grudges, we must be made right, and with the growing power of the Reich and his armed forces, especially the Kriegsmarine, our fear Adolf Hitler has recently held a strategic meeting in which they, together with the highest NSDAP officials, as well as with representatives of the Wehrmacht and Kriegsmarine, discussed a possible future of the Middle Africa concept. It was soon agreed that this idea should be revived. If, if our path leads us to war with the colonial powers, it would be wise to have meaningful plans for the overseas possessions. Furthermore, as the value lies not only in the economic side, but all the prestigiousness in a large rally was held. There were... Uh, there, the Führer holds his own speech and announces the reasserting of Middle Africa claims. Wir dürfen niemals die Verluste vergessen, die wir im Weltkrieg erlitten haben. Dazu gehört das legitime deutsche Territorium in Afrika, in für das unser Volk Verfahrer gekämpft haben und gestorben sind. Damit Deutschland seinen früheren Platz in der Welt erreichen kann, muss die Rückgewinnen Rückgewinnung dieser Gebiet, Gebiet und ihre Expansion unserer größter Priorität, Priorität sein. For this speech, the Führer was awarded by huge applause and shouts of glory. A truly wonderful day for the Reich. Africa shall be ours and serve the great purpose of the great Aryan race. Nice. Oh, Reich's colony Middle Africa becomes satellite of us. Oh. To Pennsylvania. Uh, pursue the Stop Pact. I want to do that one, but uh, we'll probably should go with something else here. Troutman Mediation. Uh, becomes Imperial Associate of Empire Japan. Oh, have you under, uh, that's very ahistorical. I encourage these guys. Ribbentrop Oshima Pact. Oh. Greece. Well, what do we come over here? Condor Legion. Power Foreign Nationalist Foreign Legion. Uh, Finish stuff. Docking rights. Uh, from Morocco. The yeah, Principe. Oh, I was looking for more stuff here. NC. I guess nothing here for the Japanese, huh? All right, all nice stuff over here. Well, let's go ahead and do, let's do the Shawl Pact with Italy. And after that, and we did do the Kriegsmarine, we'll read about that. Ooh. Focus on the major parts of Europe. Not bad. I do want to do this one, though. Uh, demand Sudan Atlanta, Muncha Conference. But let's go with this one, maybe? Uh, Nippon, Lurgi, Goshi, KK. Benito Mussolini accepts the Shawl Pact. Even though the po we stand as foes in the past, we should all stand together against our enemies, which would be a very good thing. <clears throat> Uh, it's 15, trust me, 36. Goring is, uh, very good. Quite good for us. Uh, but right now, I gotta keep doing this one, too. We're gonna keep expanding uh, situations in Sudetenland, which would be good. We're doing the Kriegs Marine and Naval Rearmament as well. Um, past that, expand the Luftwaffe. I mean, that'd be good to do, but right now, we don't really need to do that. Um, what are we gonna do? Oh, like I said before this one, we're gonna do Nippon, Lurji, Koshi, KK. Should be fine. Um, if anything, really, you come down here. Do you want to f finish off and wrap up Spain, which would be nice, nice, nice. Uh, they pretty much have it under control at this point, in my opinion. But how is Asia doing? Asia proper, I guess you could say. Um, can't quite go over there yet, which does kind of suck, you guys. Honestly, you get enough range, you might be able to just launch from Japan as is, anyways. Yeah. That should about at least a little bit, right? I do have a couple planes there, though. Oh, you're struggling. Oh, you're definitely struggling over here. Holy cow. Of course, we did go max out um, planes. Uh, max out our cast, which is fine. More ground support would be very good. Over here, can't really do anything. Obviously, here, here. home defense, continuous strike, air support is nice. Ground attack, we want to do better, battlefield air interdiction. Oil processing would be very good as well. Some more extraction, it is still it's 1957, of course. Uh, promote German nationalism, 16 divisions, not bad. Current resistance, 18, which is going down, which is not good, but still. Yeah, I just have to wait a little bit. Can wait just a little bit. Hans Gudarin's learned quite a bit, though. It's nice. It's very good. Get rid of that last port. That'd be great. I think when you're done here, go here. No, I want you, I want you to hold. You three go right there. That's super important for you to go right there. 
So you guys go there. Okay, W requests increase of equipment and storage. Okay, W war on the rights here. But the current stockpiles of weapons might not be enough for the coming war and suggested increase in weapons production they, they, to create these needed stockpiles. Surprisingly, it's not earned the scorn, but the support of Himmler. Out of the surprise of both Albert Speer and Hermann Goring's opposes vehemently, saying that the Wehrmacht might be happy with the change in economy, but the people might lose trust in the NSDAP and further stockpiles are not needed. Okay, W is right. It must increase production even if it uh, might cause displeasure. Our economy is working exactly as it should. We'll go with that one for now. Because we can use that immediately for this stuff down here too. Ah, uh, but trade. Trade first. Even more divisions. Rebuilding the Kriegsmarine. The German su Navy suffered greatly after the Weltkrieg. We are forced to hand our greatest battleships to our, the Allied powers. Yep. With the intervention of the Lud Admiral Ludwig von Reuter, our ships were rather scuttled and denied that disgraceful fate. And the Reichsmarine was limited by the Treaty of Versailles. Germany was allowed to only own a certain number of ships. Luckily, the agreed terms were overlooked, and now the Kriegsmarine already owns a number of modern ships, but not enough. Under the Anglo-German Naval Agreement, we are allowed to increase our naval production, and that's exactly what we're going to do. The two major plans presented to the Führer, of course. Uh, Reiter's plan of uh, once again a high great seas fleet is based on ambitious plan Z. In the successful end, the Kriegsmarine should possess 10 battleships, 4 aircraft carriers, 4 battlecruisers, 20 and 20 light, 20 heavy and 20 light cruisers, and more than 100 destroyers. As a contrast to it, Colonel Dönitz presented a vision of a huge raiding fleet that consisted out of modern subs. Force uh, of that size could significantly hinder Allied morale and shipping of war materials to other countries in the future. This would also noticeably lower the production costs and spare resources that could be used elsewhere. Foxy Flota, I love that one much more, in all honesty, but the South Dunes is a, ch a cheaper rating fleet. So we'll go with that one for now. Uh, student land, 37, of course, 38. Is we really want to do it? Multi Riven Drop Pact. Hmm. We have Prince Zip. Hmm. What do you want to do next? We don't know what else we need to do. Let's do uh, this one. Interessen Gemeinschaft Farben Industrie AG. AG Farben, literally Dye Industry Syndicate Corporation, a German chemical and pharmaceutical conglomerate. Formed in 1925 from a merger of six chemical companies. Um, uh, it was a NSDAP party donor and after its takeover of Germany in 1933, a major government contractor. Because we can really use that fuel now as well as a few more rubber things. Or a few more things of rubber, really. Alright, so that in mind, we're going to make sure we actually do okay here. Go and hold for now. Going back to where you need to go. That'd be good. Up here, not too much. Over here, not too much. Over here, not too much. Ah, logistics, good. Good, good, good. 37. Uh, specialized stuff. Now we can wait for that stuff, too. Uh, free repair. Criminals for the state, why not? More millies. Not enough millies. Uh, 70% is okay. 270%? Why not? Keep working on it. Extreme nationalism, more resistance. Less compliance. But more resistance is good. It's 20 right now. I'm going to keep going with the, the whole thing right there, too. Alright, so with you guys. It's bench volunteers. Right there. Concentrate your forces. Literally just blow them up if you can. Get over here, too. 3, 2, 1. Let's go. Beautiful. 3, 2, 1. Let's go. Beautiful. Uh, you go too. Nice. Uh, Enigma machine improvement. Synthetic rubber. Uh, must be research rubber processing. Okay. Um, what do we want? Sub production cost goes down. It's not bad. Not so bad either. Infect building project, but we gotta wait for that one. Um, look to this group. Farther. Let's go with the military technology cooperation next. Ah, uh, beautiful. Let's focus on the southern portion here first. Three, two, one. Let's help them out. Beautiful. And do the same thing right here, too. 0.37, not great, but it'll work for now. Crush them very easily. Go right here. We're good. Um, go right here, too. Go right there, do that. You can force the attack, too. Nice. Go right there. And they're all dead. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Claims of Yugoslavian territory? Not bad. Um, with you guys. Fighters right there. 
There we go, it's not bad. Hmm, so I'm gonna go right there first. Not bad. Madrid. Thank you for the party stuff. Spanish Republic is defeated. At least they've progressed to our favor. Absolutely beautiful. Go by 100 and split you in half. Both of the groups could do that immediately. And maple bells will do very soon. Uh, probably get rid of that soon enough, anyways. Uh, so you like too. Thank you very much. More civvies, more millies, more stuff like that. Um, not bad. Fighters are not bad. We could really use some cast here. Cast would really help us out. Pure fighting is very good as well. Is that too much? Go down by 50. There you go. Cool. Alright, steel mills. That's a little bit ahead of time. Let's grab some of that too. Specialized stuff. Come over here for that one too. Staff rotation for NCOs. Why not? Uh, post war civil composition for Franco Spain. Another fascist regime. Another potential ally. Beautiful. Wunderbar. Shoot stuff all oh, the organization. General relations. Do we want a bad? I love our flag. Baseline for future contracts. No, okay. Cancel MFO bills. How much does this cost? It's quite a bit already. Keep working on it though. That's fine for now. Mm. Wunderbar, wunderbar, wunderbar. 1940. So if carry base fighters are okay, carry base class air support, naval bombers, not bad. Heavy fighters. Honestly, we're kind of okay on everything for right now. Super be battleships though. That sounds like fun. Get some heavy ship armor first, though. So. Handler wishes to promote a skilled SS officer. A new blood to a general staff is always welcome. Where's the relationship with these guys right now? Order sabotage efforts? Yes. This is 32. Can't favor anyone in the chain of promotions. UGF is okay ish for now. Go try that. That's fine. Just tons of damage. Holy crap. Von Blumberg's um, a prostitute scandal. I've heard about this last evening. The Fuhrer, enjoying his dinner at Klein and Reichskanzlei, was approached by Goring, who, who wished to discuss a very delicate matter about uh, current Reichskriegsminister Werner von Blumberg. Werner Eduard Fritz von Blumberg, an honored Valkyrie veteran, current Minister of War, Field Marshal of the Reich, and ex supporter of the Fuhrer in his earliest days, is supposedly being married with a woman that has a very uncomfortable past. According to the Berlin police, Blomberg had been a widower since the death of his first wife, Charlotte, in 1932, until he married Erna Gurun, a 25 year old typist and secretary, who had a long criminal record, convicting her as a former prostitute as it was her mother. Among the reports is information that Erna Gurun had posed for porno pornographic photos in 1932. Furthermore, the upcoming wedding of one of Blomberg's daughters, Dorothea, uh, is not threatened by a potential scandal. She is engaged to Karl Heinz Keitel, the eldest son of Wilhelm Keitel. Seeing this chance was the first step to Werner's Wehrmacht reorganization in order to bring them closer under NSDAP control. Goring and Himmler suggested the fear he sh that he should order Blomberg to annul the marriage, to which he would never agree or be forced to resign his post to avoid scandal and violate the integrity of his army. Must resign? Wehrmacht reorganization, huh? Resign as uh, Krieg's minister, but keep his army position. Keep up, Paul. We must cover this up. Yeah, that's, I think it's more circle route. Retire from the army, yes. Good. So good. Very, very good. All right. Oh, lessons from uh, the Spanish campaign. Oh, my country didn't request docking rights. Where are we at for this all resistance stuff? 29, 20 divisions, not bad. Demand Slovenia, can we actually do that first? Mm. Effect, become owner of that area. Will this, will this hurt us really badly? She is St. Germain and Lies, so many historic Austrian territories pa phased or passed out to successive states. Well, the last year once again united with the Germanic nation is time to end these injustices. The historic province of Car Carno Carniola and Styria, which are known now as Slovenia, must be brought home. Eh, just in case, we'll save just in case. Because we can. You saw your request air so planes airplanes, you wanna about that because you're ahead, diver bar over productions. Yeah, they can have that, that's fine. And then after this we'll do the whole Munich conference and whatnot stuff.
We'll see what it's actually like. Man, Japan just don't, just does not have a lot of divisions here. Oh, never mind. They've got a crap ton of divisions. My bad. Um, you guys can go right here. Oh, you have fighters over here. Okay, you guys do this up here. I want you guys to go down here then. Von Frisch's affair. Well, the events surrounding Blomberg's marriage inspired him, and Goring and the Hundred Kimmel to arrange a similar affair for Commander in Chief Werner von Frisch. Goring did not want Frisch to become the successor to Blomberg, and thus his mainly aristocratic generals to strengthen his shoot stuffle, or weak. Oh, to weaken the Wehrmacht and his mainly aristocratic to strengthen his Schustoppel as a competitor to the regular German Heer army. Already in 1936, Reinhard Heydrich had prepared a file on Frisch that are allegations of homosexuality and had passed information on to the Fuhrer. Yet Hitler had rejected it and ordered Heydrich to destroy the file, but Heydrich did not do so. Oh. Now, once more, Heydrich uh, resurrected the old file on Frisch, who was again accused of being a homosexual by Himmler. It soon became known that the charges against Frisch were false. The information was in the file, in fact, about a Ritt Ritt Meister called Akim von Frisch. Himmler and Heydrich, however, still pursues, 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 and pursues the case. Conveniently, discovering an individual and called Hans Schmidt to serve as a witness in support of the charge. The Wehrmacht committed a court of honor of officers examine the blomberg frisch affair as it become, to become known as. The proceedings were presided over by Hermann Goring. Schmidt claimed to recognize Frisch as an officer whom he had witnessed in a homosexual act in a public uh, laboratory with a man known in translation as Bavarian Joe. However, Schmidt was exposed as a notorious criminal whose Berlin gang is specialized in the blackmail of homosexuals. Members of the German officer corps are appalled at the mistreatment of Frisch and the next meeting Himmler, Goring, and even Adolf Hitler has come under pressure from them as the case against Frisch is seen as weak. Damage to the fresh reputation has been done. You must resign as commander-in-chief. It's gone too far. Nonsense. Send them to the front. Peanut battalions. Cult Messiahs. Send them to the factories. More trade? There you go. Let's see what happens when we demand Slovenia. So we're going to keep building up more stuff here. Quite a bit more of this. One more of these. Go up to five for this as well. Five's not bad. Slovenian high quality business. It's not bad. But we must go ahead and do demand the Sudan Land on Munich Conference. The fate of the Sudet Germans was one of the worst injustices inflicted by the Treaty of Versailles. They must be brought under protection in regards to the Czech objections. Oh. Oh, any more support equipment, huh? Who are we using for uh, occupied territories? Oh, that's not right. For cavalry, um, infantry division. Trainings, Tai Lung is not bad. Alpina, Jaeger. Yeah, that's not a bad division. Political shifting, of course. Beautiful, my friends. Flight school is nice. Um, more agility is not bad. Mission flight maximum, honor or death, death, honor and death. Censorship. Ah, I love censorship. And Thirty-eight. We can actually come down here and get more research speed, right? Yes. Good. Uh, Balk. Or however you pronounce his name. Oh, he's good here too. Um, I guess there's some divisions here, but I'm more interested in just sending planes. That's all I really care about, sending planes down here. Hey, look, you can pray in celebrations if you remember that, but go ahead. Yay! Oh, crap. Even more planes, please. More, 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 more. Never enough. That can blow? Sure, why not? Hmm. Egocia, Anna Kimla, Carl Egocia. So good, so good. Even more stuff there, that'd be great, 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 great. I'm sorry, it's turning into like an hour and a half to two hour long video, but it is what it is, you know. I want to make sure we get far in this video. Push for the first one. Ooh. 
17 is not great. That's why we're doing the conference now. Let's see what will happen. The Pinay incident. Incident. Wait, Nash's victory. What do you mean, Nash's victory now? We already... They've, been, they've won for a while now. Ah. Ships aren't that great, but, you know, whatever. We'll deal with it. Bills plus minus point five. It's a lot. Let me do that too. Go three now. Ooh, more dockyards. Good. All right, so we actually make some ships now. Heavy ship hulls, not bad. Free dreadnoughts, Spencer ships. Eh. These are hulls. But whatever. Um, cruiser hulls, not bad. Pretty probably relatively inexpensive to make. Uh, heavy batteries. Oh wow. Let's go with some light cruisers. Light batteries, no. Dual purpose, dual purpose batteries. Heavy, old, heavy, mediums. Lights. Go lights for now. No radar yet. Definitely level two. That's fine. Um, as we saw, there's one level there. Uh, torpedoes aren't bad. Depth charges aren't bad. Anti-air cannons, huh? It's not bad. Change you to anti-sub stuff. Kind of a generic sort of cruiser module thing right now that we have here. Which is fine. Whatever. Uh, what type of heavy batteries are these? Super heavy batteries, but that'd be too much. Got more of that there. No radar still. So that's level 3. Yeah, that's interesting. Heavy armor scheme? Or armor scheme? Well, this would certainly give us a little more speed, but definitely hurt our armor, which we don't want to do. Um, heavy batteries. Even a little more piercing is always good. Um, Anti-air, it looks like. Okay, sure, why not? Um, don't want to slow us down too much. Well, ability does go down a little bit more. Get another secondary battery. A heavy attack would go down quite a bit. Uh, you know what? Just stay with what we got. There are ships for the love of God. That'll be fine. Get some convoys too. That'd be nice. There you go. Not bad. Good amount of factories. Could use, always use more, of course. Could use better planes. Actually, you could use better tanks. It's in itself. Grossman best shafts. That's fine. Panzer divisions. At least go two light tanks and go at least four. At least three. 18 combat. That's not bad. Um, armored recon. Would be maybe better. You lose actually quite a bit of defense. Quite a bit. A little more soft attack. You lose actually a little bit of reconnaissance as well. Interesting. But I'll give you a little more armor. And I'm all about that armor for tanks. Motorized divisions, 18 combat, that's already pretty gosh darn decent, so I'm not opposed to that. The Munich Agreement. After prolonged uh, negotiations, representatives of the United Kingdom and the French finally yielded and accepted their demands over the Sudetenland. The results were then presented to the Czech ambassadors, Hubert Masaryk and Wojciech uh, Masny. The Czechoslovak government, realizing the hopelessness of standing against us alone, reluctantly capitulated and agreed to abide by the agreement. With this, we were granted total control over all of the Sudetenland, a territory that is not only a political and national victory, but also an economic one. A Sudetenland contains 70% of Czechoslovak iron and steel industry, and 70% of its electrical power and all border defenses. Those can be further utilized as it contains modern guns and equipment, as well as high steel quality. Uh, or quality, a high quality steel. While negotiations were successful, a war lusting Adolf Hitler sta stated soon after a meeting with Chamberlain, Gentlemen, this will be my first international conference, and I can assure you that it will be my last. On another occasion, he even heard saying of Chamberlain, if ever that silly old man comes interfering here again with his umbrella, I'll kick him downstairs and jump on his stomach in front of the photographers. A true example of a weak mind of our enemies, and our fear made sure to expand that knowledge. Nevertheless, the Sudet and Germans are celebrating the so-called liberation in this settlement. It has lifted up our country even further. Sudet and Germans are now safe under our Reich. Beautiful. Research Eastern Claims. First Ljubljana Award. Uh, Fate of Czechoslovakia. Remove Allied Appeasement. End of Czechoslovakia. First Vienna Award. Uh, let's do uh, Fate of Czechoslovakia, why not? The time's come to buy all Czech lands between those who can govern them properly. We should consider the creation of a separate Slovak state, pu uh, Slovak puppet state to the east. Why not? Because we can. Get these more uh, stuff like that too. Let's also do some of this too. Uh, 70, 70, 70, 60, 60, 60, 60. Oh, do it there, why not? 71. So was it? Was there any point to actually just do all this stuff here? Spanish mines ownership. As a repayment of the debts of the national Spain made during the Civil War, we have gained ownership in some of the mines. Secured some stable supply of much needed resources needed for war production, mainly tungsten. Human at Harvard lasts only until their debts are repaid, which comes closer every single day. Oh. Oh, form Opel Commander de Wehrmacht. 
The Reich's uh, Kriegsministerium, a defense ministry of the Reich, still functioning on the old basis set by the Weimar Republic during its establishment in October 1919. It's a goal to reform this institute to the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, where our Führer shall have decisive role as the sole leader of the Reich's armed forces. Such action, however, is impossible to do in both prominent figures of the Reich's Kriegsministerium. Field Marshal Werner von Blomberg and General Oberst Werner von Frisch are still in play. Hi, Dill, hey. Interesting. Weird. Following the resolution of the Reich War Ministry due to the scandal of its two main representatives, the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht, High Command of the Armed Forces, will be formed upon its place as a replacement. It will have nominal oversight of the Heer, the Kriegsmarine, and the Luftwaffe. During its formation, the rivalry with the Armed Services Branch Commands, mainly with the Army High Command OKAH, prevented the OKW from becoming a unified German general staff and an effective chain of command. Nevertheless, it will still help coordinate operations between the three services. With this reformation, the Führer effectively took control of the Wehrmacht, as when von Blomberg was asked by Hitler, out of respect for him after his dismissal, who would he recommend to replace him had he had not suggested anybody, and suggested that Hitler himself should take over the job. Yet he said to Hitler about Keitel that he's just the man who runs my office. Hitler snapped his fingers and exclaimed, that's exactly the man I'm looking for. Will leave the OKW with a yes man Kaito as a figurehead? With well, a capable man in his staff. Ooh. Whoa. Why not? Munich agreement, please for now, last, advances into the Sudan land. While well, the soldiers are advancing into the Sudan land without any active defiance, they are, together with, it, with their general staff, surprised by the extension and quality of the border fort, so called Rapik. Although they are, most of them are still in reasonable shape, some of them were damaged by the retreating Czechoslovak army. They destroyed optics, radios, and heavy guns present as they were not willing to hand them over under our control. Sprayed inscriptions expressing resistance and dislike are also no exception. Despite the small setback, our troops are welcomed as saviors by the Sudeten Germans and we managed to control, or seize control over the Sudet, all Sudeten land. With that, we have secured what was left after the Czech army, guns, artillery, and more, and the rest of the Czechoslovakia lies within reach. A small act of defiance, but so be it. Oh, the Reich's... Uh, Caesar Hong's ministerium is responsible for the schools and universities, the research institutions and museums in the Reich, and around a quarter million civil servants' work. Now the extensive re-education campaign of our population began, we will publish the new guidelines for education bringing the national social traditions and etiquette into everyday life, focusing on the most important sections of our people, the young generation. Re-educating our whole population will indeed be a very costly and demanding process, and therefore will be divided into three stages, according to the Reich's uh, likes as the Hung's minister, Bernard Rust, and once we succeed, the National National Socialistische Deutsche Arbeiter Partei shall be imperishable. The re educated population, holy shnikes. Political shifting is fine, whatever. Was there any point to do this whole stuff here? I don't know. Doesn't seem like it, but whatever. Alright, so do that anyways and double up if you can. Everyone going to build up his good head? Nah, I don't care about that. Student and Germans. <clears throat> and you can do that too. Uh, Pytos, two Pytos, there you go. Well, the Sudenten, Sudenten Deutsche Partei, the Sudenten German Party, was created by Conrad Henlein under the name Sudenten Deutsche Heimatfront on October 1st, 1933, some months after the first Czechoslovak Republic had outlawed the German National Socialist Workers' Party. With the rising power of the Nazi Party in Germany, the Sudeten German Party became a major pro-Nazi force in Czechoslovakia, with explicit official aim of breaking the country up and joining it up to the Third Reich. By this day, the party had over 1.3 million members, 40% uh, of ethnic German citizens of Czechoslovakia. While the SDP played a key role in a successful annexation of Sudetenland by enacting demands, staging events that should showcase the Czechoslovakian oppression of Germans in Czechoslovakia and military actions, it remains unclear what fate lies for the party now when our goal was achieved. It might be best idea to let Conrad Henlein keep power on the student land, as he already has some experience with the local management and is capable of holding the Reichsstadthalter position more than sufficiently. Karl Hermann Frank, former deputy leader of the SDP and known for most radical national socialists in the SDP, could then attain his position as Obergruppenführer of the police apparatus in Studentland. Direct rule of the Reich instead. They need the best know how to organize themselves. Sure. Should be spread across here. Just fine. Uh, we need way more support equipment. Shang-Chi is gone. That's cool. Very good. Shang-Chi is gone. We need more of that there. Get more of that too. Keep building ourselves up. Keep going. Two synthetic refineries at all times now. Because my god, we're going to need them. Super heavy battleships. Deck conversions. Um, Death charge throwers. We could do that too. Why not? Cancel the MBFO bills. Oh, we don't have military factors. We're still doing well. Ooh, awesome stuff there, too. That's not good. Your stuff is looking a little weaker, which is very nice. Alright, so if you guys up here, we're still doing not too badly. If you guys over here, 
More close actually probably be good. So they're doing a good amount of damage though. Rex Marshal Goring demands increase of Lufafa funding. The stronger Lufafa is, oh, um, the easier we wipe out our enemies. Spat, where is Spat? Funds we can get elsewhere. Yeah, Goring is pretty high. He's loyal, but whatever. Following the succession of Ruthenia, small scale fighting in the border region or border land, and Slovakian desire for an independent state, Edvard Benes has requested an audience with our Fuhrer Adolf Hitler. He was granted his permission and headed to Berlin immediately. There he met firstly with the foreign minister, Joachim von Ribbentrop, to whom he announced his willingness to cooperate. Then Edvard Benes met with Adolf Hitler, gave the Czech president two options, cooperate with Germany in a case which the entry of German troops would take place in a tolerable manner, and permit Czechoslovakia a generous life of her own, autonomy and a degree of national freedom, or face a scenario in which resistance would be broken by force of arms, using all means. Due to the worsening health of Edvard Benes, the negotiations lasted only a few hours, and then, then Czech president effectively signed Czechoslovakia away to Germany. On the morning of the next day, our troops entered the remaining Czech parts of the rest Czechia, meaning practically no resistance apart from the one organized resistance in Mitesh, uh, where an infantry company commanded by Karel Palovic reviewed to capitulate. Next day, Adolf Hitler went to Czech lands and from Prague Castle proclaimed the German protectorate of Böhmen and Maren. In a speech delivered in the Reichstag, Führer, our Führer stressed the military importance of occupation, noting that by occupying Czechoslovakia, Germany has gained over 2,100 field cannons, over 400 tanks, 500 anti aircraft artillery pieces, 43,000 machine guns, over a million military rifles, over 100,000 100, pistols, and about a billion rounds of ammo, and 3 million anti aircraft grenades. This amount of weaponry would be sufficient to arm about half of Bahia. Direct rule of the Reich? Hmm. We just straight up annex them. Propaganda? Let the Slovaks out of their state annex the rest. However, to split Czechoslovakia with Hungary is the way to go. It's not bad. I, I always love that one doing that all the time. Probably going to be improved. Let's go with slightly more circle with that one. Embargo the rising sun. Why would we do that one? There you go. Hmm, more fuel. Sudetenlandische Treibstoffwerke AG. Research Eastern Claims. Copyright the Czech Brother and First Vienna Award. Um, huh. Well, I kind of like that one. We could use more, a little more fuel, you know? Look, to the Balkans and beyond. Oh. First Vienna Award going over that, please go ahead. Oh, there you go. Bulgaria seeks Balkan claims warranted. A delegation for Bulgaria's approach to government asking for German support for the claims in the Balkans seeking to secretly negotiate and secure Bul Bulgarian territorial expansion in the region in the near future, in exchange for the Bulgarian alignment with the German Reich and the country's entry into the Axis. States with pre-arranged Bulgarian territorial expansion modifier will be transferred to Bulgaria once any faction ally controls a state and Bulgaria has joined the same faction as Germany. Why not? I'll uh, we'll probably do anti-commentary pact. Interference by the Communist International and internal affairs of the nations not only endangers the internal peace and social well-being, but also menaces the peace of the world. We'll ask many of the non-communist countries to sign the pact and make sure that we keep the red menace in the check. Not a bad idea. Tizo, welcome. Beautiful. Ein Deutsch in Czech names. The first step to Czech Germanization is to get rid of their language. German will be the primary language uh, spoken on offices and taught in schools. So first, yes. Could have done this one a while ago, but whatever. Molotov Ribbentrop Act. A treaty of friendship and non-aggression with the U.S. Star might turn uh, the stomach, but it will allow the precious oil to keep flowing into Germany. A secret addendum will divide the territories of Romania, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, and Finland into German and Soviet spheres of influence. Good. They should. Czech resistance movements. Our armies march throughout Prague and Brno, yet Czechs are not completely be beaten. Many underground resistance movements raise and try to harm our military production as much as they can. The most popular wrecking, ha uh, wrecking activity is creating faulty weapons and tanks in uh, the our factories. We will not let it be, and they will not like it. This looks. Another tank division, though, is good. Very, very good. Actually, for you guys. Um, I'm not sure we're going to beat up first. Maybe you guys? I don't know. Let's see. For you, I'm going to actually just send, like, you guys here. Everyone else here can just kind of hang out. There we go. Let's sure organize Obvia, finally. Finally, 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 finally. More attack bombers. Are we looking good for everything else? That's good. Um, attack bombers are okay. Naval bombers are, are super important as well. Grab some more interwar armored cars. That'd be good. Anti-counter pact. 
Not a robot factory, just in case. Send them to the factories, it's good. Uh, what's it here? Super goods, refined war bond drives. Uh, it's not bad. Go oh, refined war bond drives. More manpower though. Yeah, probably super goods we'll have enough of. Refined recruitment drives. That sounds more like us, probably. Support Metaxas. Oh, that's fine. Freeline Bulgaria. Yeah, probably that one too. Staff rotation for NCOs. This is person 838. Let's come back over here. Specialized stuff. No, we're good. Seal factors would be nice, but we can kind of wait. Or coordination. Death charge with mortars and stuff like that. Um, 38. Let's grab some more infantry stuff. That'd be good as well. Good, 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 good. Region wise, how many light tanks do we have? 240 is not bad. We could use more medium tanks in all honesty. We could, uh, actually, do we have any medium tanks? We have light tanks, heavy tanks, and more medium tanks. We should research some heavy tanks next. Um, let's grab someone else. Um, gun stuff we already got. That's not bad. Fighter stuff we can wait. Another high command. Anyone else? Close air support. Sparrow would be really good. Close air support attack and defense. Uh, good student. Shona. Uh, that's not bad. Not bad either, but... Yeah, it's brawl for now. Uh, Marco Fisher. Nice. I started doing some of this too, because when we want to like, take out Poland, we should do relatively okay. For now, we can help lower resistance all over the place, though. So. And that'll be good. Up next, theorists. Von Richthofen, Brown, Physiker. Another minus two. Do the political power goes down. Ooh. I guess I think the air doctrine would be probably better to do. It's more close air support. Why not? Screw it. Get on Bulgaria. Finish line. Moscow signs a pact. The Soviet Union, as well as agreed to a non-negotiable pact. This means that we're free to act without the risk of Soviet intervention. Unfortunately, some of our friends now question Germany's commitment towards the ultimate destruction of communism. When matters with Poland and France have been settled, we may need to re revisit this treaty, but that's a discussion for another time. Great. Research Eastern claims. The Great War still lost so much of German territory in the East with the resurrection of Poland and the transfer of Mimel to Lithuania. An ultimatum should be sent to both nations, but Poland, at least, will likely not bow to mere words. Okay, W increase uh, more sales of stuff. If you want to that, please go ahead. Get like no political power. The economy is working exactly as it should. UGF is where? Where will call von Thalhausen as well? Um, Himmler and Goring. Or Himmler and. Okay, 22, trustworthy, competent. I don't want to lower my. It's working exactly as it should for now. Reline Bulgaria. We assert Eastern claims. The man with the iron heart. Ooh. Oh god, I have to do this one next. Czechs are constantly sabotaging our war production. There's only one man who can remedy that. The man with an iron heart, Reinhard Hadrich, will become the protector of women in Marne and put an end to this, this disorder. Oh, yes, please. Ooh, but we gotta do that one too. Geheim Stadtpolizei. This is such a detailed mod. I mean, it takes a while to get through everything, but it's so detailed. I love it. Please capture an airbase. For the love of God, please capture an airbase. Japan, please. Capture an airbase. For the love of God. Book fail. Gary Grizz, we gained our old allies back. Yes. Man with an iron heart. Oh, yes. A man who stole my heart. Next mission for von Falkenhausen. Sure, why not? Alexander von Falkenhausen was recently recalled from his military mission in China, where he served from 1930 as a military advisor to Chiang Kai-shek due to, to strengthening the relations with Japan. Now, when we have this scuffled general back home, we can organize another auxiliary mission, military mission with von Falkenhausen as its leader. Few countries, mainly our allies or potential allies with less experienced military, are offered as appropriate targets, but with all that depends on our previous government decisions. After all, the general this quality might find best use at home. Matansky needs a skill. His calm wisdom will help the Japanese the most. Best service at home. You know, give him the Japanese. As expected. Modern Blitzkrieg? Nice. Both international. Good. Keep building, building, building. Also, go and make sure that we build one, maybe, hint of palm, and maybe. We'll see how far we go with that. 
They are announced the Treaty of Trianon. Good. So good. And then research Eastern Claims after this. Censorship. Ah, I love censorship. Opposition suppression. Yes. More compliance gain. Yes. Ooh, Guanxi Click is gone too. Ooh. That's perfect. Because right here, we can barely do any damage. So, with these amount of planes, we can come out of here. Ooh, we come over here too. Southern China would be great. Ooh, that's going to help out so much more. Can we see any more planes? Keep training if you need it. Uh, you know what? Let's grab you guys for now. Uh, you know, I'll send some tactical bombers instead of cast this time, just because the range is getting really bad here. So. I love it. Check final germanization. Oh, 105 days. We're going to wait for that one for a while. Uh, that's not bad. Decide on our push towards Poland. We'll probably want to do that one, but question of Polish territory. We decided on our push towards the territory of Poland, which we lost out of the Valkyrie. We were able to invite Polish ambassadors to discuss our return of a selected number of states under our control. Use of allied mediation to ensure loss of return of lost states. Proceed with Untenim and Himmler to gain a war on Poland. Yeah, we'll probably just go to war with them. We got crap ton of guns. Could use more tanks. And medium tanks. I keep forgetting to research more medium tanks. God dang it. Um, you two are just straight up cast, which is awesome. We need a lot of cast where we're going to. Not we're good. Computer machine, nice. Vaughn. The Werner von Braun celebrates success. The young Werner von Braun represents his, or presents his work and the thesis, construction, theoretical, and experimental solution to the problem of liquid propellant rocket already by the end of 1934. His group had successfully launched two liquid fuel rockets at rows, of course, uh, of certain height. Um, if you remember that first part, still, I've read about earlier. Now he finally claims that that and tremendous progress in his research was made due to the increased support from the Reichsforschungsrat and the V-2 long-range strategic missiles already for deployment. Um, he also informed us that further advances can be made in, in the short term, which might even accomplish a first ever space flight. Because, as he once said, I have learned to use the word impossible with the great, greatest caution. This will strengthen the Reich. Nice. Oh, wait, did they liberate the Guangxi clique? Or is that another group that we got to beat? Whoa. Oh, they came back somehow. That's weird. Okay, well, whatever. Mimel, Lithuania, folds. The Lithuanian government has agreed to demands, and Mimel will be incorporated back into East Prussia, yet another unlawfully stolen province has been returned to the German nation. We still get more research stuff passing. Active. Oh, another gun again. Okay. Chongqi's not gone, too. Okay, then. Can we wish to promote a skilled SS officer? Um. Sure. For now? Sure, why not? Got some more companies here, too. First Ljubljana War, it's only 15 days. The hypocritical Western powers breach national self determination while handing over many minorities to be ruled by Serbs. We're in a position to right the historical wrongs and make friends at the same time. For those who wish to side with us in the European order, we can be very generous. Might as well. I guess. Plane wise, how are we doing? Um, how are we doing over here? MFO bells, political shifting, whatever. Ooh. Build up everybody as much as we possibly can for now. Alright, not bad. Tanks, medium tanks, medium tanks, medium tanks. I don't care how long it's going to take. We want more medium tanks. Ambassador in France, Herr von Rath, assassinated. Whoa! Based on the per Führer's personal orders in 1938 August, German authorities announced that residence permits for foreigners were being cancelled and would have, no, have to be renewed. This included German-born Jews of foreign citizenship. Poland stated that it renounced citizenship rights of Polish Jews living abroad for at least five years after the end of October, effectively making them stateless. In the so-called Poland Action, and more than 12,000 Polish Jews, among them the philosopher and theologian Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel and future literary critic Marcel uh, Reich Ranicki, were expelled from Germany on October 28, 1938. They were ordered to leave their homes in a single night, and they were allowed only one suitcase per person to carry to their belongings. The deportees were taken from their homes. Uh, two railway stations were put on trains to the Polish border, where Polish border guards sent them back into Germany. The stalemate continued for days in the pouring rain, with the Jews marching without food or shelter between the borders. 4,000 were granted entry to Poland, but the remaining 8,000 were forced to stay at the border. Among those expelled was a family of Sandel and Riva Grzyspan. 
Gunnisban. Polish Jews who had immigrated to Germany in 1911 and settled in Hanover. The 17 year old son Hesher was living in Paris with an uncle. Hesher received a postcard from his family from the Polish border describing the family's expulsion. They, then they took us in police trucks and prisoners to lorries, about 20 men in each truck, and they took us to the railway station. The streets were full of people shouting, Juden raus, auf nach Palestina. Not one told us what was up, but we realized this was going to be the end. We haven't had a, we haven't had a penny. Could you send us something? On the morning, Monday, 7th of November, 1938, Herschel purchased a revolver and a bo box of bullets and went to the German embassy and asked to see an embassy official. After he was taken to the office of Ernst von Rath, he pulled out the gun and shot him five times. After that, Herschel made no attempt to escape the French police and freely confessed to the shooting. In his pocket, he carried a postcard to his parents with a message, May God forgive me, I must protest so that the whole world may hear my protest. Ernst von Rath died of his wounds two days earlier, or two days later. And even though death isn't devastating for the regime, just as he was a professional diplomat with a foreign office who had expressed anti-Nazi sympathies, largely based on the Nazi's treatment of the Jews and under Gestapo investigation for being politically unreliable, Adolf Hitler was furious about the Jewish attack on the Deutsche Mann. Therefore, the retaliation came the very next day, barring Jewish children from German state uh, elementary schools, and definitely suspending Jewish cultural activities, and putting a halt to the publication of Jewish newspapers and magazines. Darn coward, this will, they will have consequences. And, of course, we'll do uh, Geheime Stadtpolizei. Gestapo, the state police, was created by Goring in thirty-three by combining the various security uh, police agencies of Prussia into one organization, beginning on April 20th, 1934. It passed to the administration of the Schutzstaffel and national leader, Heinrich Kimmler, who in thirty-six was appointed chief of German police by, of course, Hitler. Christoph Nacht. What of Ernst von Rath's death reached Hitler that evening while he, was, while he was with several key members of the Nazi party at dinner commemorating the 1923 Bierhaupusch? After intense discussions, Hitler left the assembly abruptly without giving his usual address. Propaganda minister Josef Goebbels delivered that speech in his place and said that the Führer had decided that demonstrations should not be prepared or organized by the party, but insofar as they erupt spontaneously, they are not to be hampered. The chief party judge, Walter Busch, stated that the message was clear with these words. Goebbels had commanded the party leaders to organize the pogrom. Some leaders of party officials a leading party officials disagreed with Goebbels' actions, fearing that the diplomatic crisis would provoke. Heinrich Himmler stated, I suppose that it is in Goebbels' megalomania and stupidity which is responsible for starting this operation now in a particularly difficult diplomatic situation. Nevertheless, at 1.20 a.m. on November 10th, 1938, Heinrich or Hein Reinhard Heydrich sent an urgent secret telegram to the Sicher Heights Polizei and Stubabteilung containing instructions regarding the riots. This included guidelines for the protection of foreigners and non-Jewish businesses and property. Police were instructed not to interfere with the riots unless the guidelines were violated. Police were also instructed to seize Jewish archives from synagogues and community offices and to arrest and detain healthy male Jews who are not too old for eventual transfer to concentration camps. Müller, in a message to the SA and SS commanders, stated that the most extreme measures would be taken out against the Jewish people. The SA and Hitler Youth uh, shattered the windows of about 7,500 Jewish stores and businesses and looted their goods. Jewish homes were ransacked all throughout Germany. Although violence against Jews had not been explicitly condoned by the authorities, there were cases of Jews being beaten or assaulted. Following the violence, police departments recorded a large number of suicides and rapes. The rioters also destroyed 267 synagogues throughout Germany, Austria, and the Sudetenland. Over 1,400 synagogues and prayer rooms. Many Jewish cemeteries, more than 7,000 Jewish shops, and 29 department stores were damaged and in many cases destroyed. More than 30,000 Jewish men were arrested. After this, the Jewish community was fined 1 billion Reichsmarks. When the dust settled and the blood was flowing away, the silence began as every German knew that they had just crossed a terrible line, and yet they rejoiced in the aftermath of this event. This Kristallnacht had been reported worldwide, causing international outrage in the Reich. Reaction to the Kristallnacht was varied. Many spectators gathered around the scene, most of them in silence. Goring, who was in favor of expropriating the Jews rather than destroying Jewish property, as it had happened in the pogrom, complained directly to Sischerheit uh, Polizei. Chief Hedrich, immediately after the events. I'd rather you dine in 200 Jews than destroy so many valuable assets. Less than, 20, less than 24 hours after Kristallnacht, Hitler made a one hour long speech in front of a group of journalists where he completely ignored the recent events on everyone's mind. Former Kaiser Wilhelm II commented, For the first time, I'm ashamed to be German. Zum ersten Mal schema ich mich. Deutsche Zusein. A question of Polish territory, though. The territory we lost due to the Treaty of Versailles to Poland after World War. It was long been a thorn in her eyes. The most disputed area is around the city of Danzig, which has, up to this date, more German populace than actual Polish. Even though we signed the German Polish non aggression pact on January 26, 1934, where we in Poland pledged to resolve our problems by bilateral negotiations and to forego armed conflict for a period of ten years, it was mostly just an attempt to worsen Polish relationship with our other allies, or with its other allies, mostly France. Originally, though, our Führer Adolf Hitler unilaterally withdrew from both the German and Polish non aggression pact of 1934 and the Anglo German Naval Agreement of 1935. Talks over Danzig and the corridor broke down and months passed without diplomatic interaction between Germany and Poland, but the time to act has come. Negotiations opens up a lot of our options, however. If there will be negotiations, the Schutzstaffel has prepared a false flag operation which can be staged with some two dozen similar German incidents just before the full invasion of Poland. Let's give our bias with an excuse, even if it will sound incredibly uh, stupid. Because of the fear said, if you tell a lie big enough and tell it frequently enough, it will be believed. Immediate arrival of Polish diplomats to discuss the fate of Danzig. Of Danzig. Hmm. Proceed with Operation Himmler and put the blame on the Polish aggression. 
Yeah, Annex War Goal against them. No reasonable way. Operation Himmler. Operation Himmler. Yes, please. How dare they? Operation Himmler is a false flag project planned and executed according to create the appearance of Polish aggression against Germany. According to the official announcement, the following will be communicated to the public. Herr Horn, a Glorica Bevolkerung des Reiches. Early this morning, Polish army stormed various border buildings, scared the locals with inaccurate shots, carried out acts of vandalism, and retreated, leaving behind dead bodies in Polish uniforms. Later that day, Hitler delivered a speech in the Reichstag. I can no longer find any willingness on the part of the Polish government to conduct serious negotiations with us. These proposals for mediation have failed because in the meanwhile, there, first of all, came as an answer to the sudden Polish general mobilization, followed by more Polish atrocities. These were again repeated last night. Recently, one night, there was as many as 21 frontier incidents. Last night, there were 14, of which three were quite serious. I have, therefore, resolved to speak to Poland in the same language language that Poland for months past has used towards us. This night, for the first time, Polish regular soldiers fired our own territory. Since 5.45 a.m., we've been returning the fire. I'll continue the struggle, no matter against whom, until the safety of the Reich and its rights are secured. Right after the Herr was ordered to militarize, and the general staff was informed that further official expressions of procedure will be delivered soon. How dare they? And when does a war goal expire? It doesn't, which is why we did that right now. Uh, we can do that too. Focus on the major European powers. Silo. Germanized Bundesha Pact. Well, let's see what happens. Because we'll have to end this episode pretty much right now. Because I've we've done this for two hours now. So, um, anything here? Intricate war economies. Ooh, are the nations in our spheres of influence have grown to extreme economic dependencies on us? We can use this to increase our control over their economies and influence our influence on their foreign policies. And we'll maybe do one more after that. Is that like rubber? Oh yes, please. Large scale motorization and aviation requires a large amount of rubber, of which we all know sources. We must improve the ways we create it synthetically. But if you enjoyed this extremely long video, and if you're still watching, I thank you very much. But please do consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you are new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow as we will invade Poland together. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.